The following episode of the Comics and Crypto podcast is for informational purposes only, and anything expressed by the hosts or their guests is solely their opinion. This podcast does not constitute financial advice, and anyone wishing to invest should seek their own independent financial or professional help. Have fun and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sean O'Hare, and I know comics. Hi, I'm Spencer Vogel, and I know crypto. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Loader, and I don't know shit. This is the Comics and Crypto podcast. Comics and Crypto. Hey, hi everyone. Hey. Welcome back to our second episode of VB, the VB Community Questions and Answering. And today we're joined by the amazing Johnny Dunn. How are we doing, fam? How are we doing? Thank you for having me on today. Welcome, yeah, Johnny. Thanks for seeing you guys. <laughs> How you doing today, Johnny? Doing well, man. Doing well. Got the drop today. Couldn't be hey, happier. Congrats. Congrats. Really? Coming, but you cr- I've been killing the drops man. lately, guys. So uh, I've been feeling I've been, good. Feeling good. I, I've been trying to, to follow like your advice on the on the 20. drop. And... <laughs> for Still no luck. Still I've, been no in, luck. I've been getting none of them. I think I, I'm not, I'm living out in Colorado right now, and I think just proximity to the uh, the Virginia AW, AWS servers just doesn't quite cut it. That's what um, people are telling me. I, I yeah. keep going over like um, my, my download speed and everything for people because you keep asking. And today, I don't even think I had a great ping or whatever the case may be. But I live on the East Coast near New York. So maybe that has yeah. an impact. I, I had much, much better, uh, you know, when I was living in Boston and when I was living in New York, I had much better luck. Oh, OK. So maybe it's yeah. the East Coast luck then. <laughs> no, I, I, think it, I think it makes a huge difference. It might, yeah. Well, people are asking start- me if I live in the basement of the AWS servers. At one <laughs> <laughs> so you've been killing it though in the drops. I've been trying, man. Thank you. I don't have too much money to be making moves in the market. So I got to try to do it anyway I can right now. The market's been insane. It's been definitely, insane. Definitely. But uh, before we get started, I wanted to let everyone know that we are currently doing a giveaway. And as a thank you for all your support and love with the help of an anonymous donor, we're actually giving away a secret rare of House of X number one and also two physical comic books, which is a contest worldwide. So anybody around the world can enter. Um, make sure to follow up of going our our link tree and the link will be provided in the details below. But uh, you keep in mind, we're going to ship this comic book anywhere around the world. So whoever wins, we're going to super team. Ooh, that's a good one right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the physical yeah. comic books are super cool. It's, it's House of X number one and Powers of X number one. And it's the variant edition where you put the two covers together and it makes one big picture. Oh, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. It's, it's yeah. a really, really cool physical set to have. So one person will get that and also the Secret Rare uh, NFT as well. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. This is, this is supposed to be our 5,000 follower giveaway, but we already blew past that and we're getting close to 7,000. <laughs> you guys are about to be at 10K <laughs> soon. You guys are moving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big things ahead for you guys, for sure. That's yeah. for sure. Keep on going. Thank you. Guys, Thank you. Content you guys have is great. I mean, I watch it all the time, so... You know, definitely appreciate what you guys are doing. Appreciate that, man. I mean, thanks so much, man. Definitely. So, so a question number one comes from Stephanie. Would the Killer Croc and Batman collectible on Sunday be considered a blue chip? Oh, we got the new Batman drop. I am excited for this Batman drop because we haven't had Batman in a while, right? It's been, it's a, while, been a few yeah. months now. So it's hard to say if this would be a blue chip or not. I do like the fact that it is a full set by itself. It has that Superman vibe with the I think there's 8,000 editions somewhere around there. I'm not sure exactly how I many. It's 8888. Okay, yeah, 8,888. So it kind of has that Superman vibe. I like the fact that it is the first Batman in color. I think that's going to be a big one. That is the I'm reason why. About that. That's the why, for me as a collector, I really want this Batman for that reason. I'm not so big on the Killer Croc aspect. Personally, I, wasn't, I never even really knew Killer Croc. That may be like something I should know. But because I didn't know, I just want this one really because I'm a big Batman fan. And we have the black and white Batman. I think long term, having the first Batman in color, it could be a big deal. I think the prices may start out kind of low and work its way up there. So I'm hoping to grab at least one, trying to get two personally on the drop. That's my goal. Is it a blue chip? I think there's different tiers of blue chips. That's the way I kind of see. I see like the top, top tiers, the ones we know, like the the Todd Batman's up there, the Marvel Comics Secret Rare is up there, the Walt Disney statue, partner statue, the Secret Rare Spider-Man. I feel like those are the top, top tier blue chips. The Rizzo I would include up there. And I would say the Batman statue, 
I think the Mickey Mouse NFT, that ultra rare is a blue chip for sure. I'm going to lower this tier. I don't think, maybe I'm wrong on this one. I don't think it's a top, top tier blue chip. I think it's a good, valuable collectible. I will say that. I don't think it's the top tier blue chip though. We're going to see how it plays out. Maybe I'm wrong on that one. But for me, I'm going to try to get two. I would say it's not a top, top tier blue chip though. It's a cool yeah, blue chip for sure. Yeah, yeah it's a super it's cool collectible, one. but I, I definitely, I would not consider it a blue chip. Um, I guess um, like, probably important to I guess get a definition for what we consider a blue chip is definitely. um so i mean I, I pulled a definition from from investopedia um so in the traditional investing world when you're you know talking about stocks and companies um so a blue chip stock is a company that typically has a large market cap a sterling reputation and many years of success in the business world um so translating translating that over to nfts um you know these are the nfts that you know are either like the ogs or have built up enough of a community that have shown that they're going to stand the test of time mm -hmm. and that the ones that are, you know, in, in a major NFT bear market, these are the ones that are going to hold their value and the ones that aren't going to crash. Um, so yeah, like CryptoPunk, Sport Ape Yacht Club, um, you know, I would consider those blue chip, um, maybe Clonex by Artifact Studios. Um, but then you look at Vivi, like a lot of these can, could be considered blue chip because uh, they're backed by major IP. And that gives you, that gives it the reputation um, that, you know, even though these NFTs don't necessarily have years of track record, um, the, the IP and the companies that are backing them give them that track record and make them blue chip. Um, so yeah, so I, I probably wouldn't consider this one a blue chip because it's not a major, major first appearance. Um, I, th I think it's a really super cool collectible, but it's definitely not at the same tier as, as McFarland or you know Secret Air Spider-Man or Walt or any of those. I agree. Yeah, that's really tough for me because you know, for when I think of blue chip, I think of grails. I have that, <laughs> that connection in mind. But the term definition of a grail is very subjective to a lot of people. People have different opinions and feelings about what that word means. You know, some people call like the Miles Morales Ultimate Fallout from Four comic a grail, and I don't because our definition is just different. It doesn't right, mean right. they're wrong. It's just different. You know, for us, like when we look at a grail, it's worth it's a comic that's worth a half a million dollars or more in its highest value. That's how we look at a grail. And for, for this specifically, it's an amazing looking collectible and it's super cool, but how we'll do long-term, how will it stand the test of time? I mean, we're looking at Killer Croc. It's cool, that's the first appearance of Killer Croc, but Killer Croc, who is Killer Croc? Well, Killer Croc right. is, a, is a villain that's in the top 20 of Batman villains, top 20. So that's good, I mean, not great. I mean, right. It's not it's no FA big. Joker. Yeah. It's not Joker. It's not Two Face. Mm. It's not. It's not Mr. Freeze. It's right. not. It's not the Riddler or Poison Ivy. Those are all like top five, likely top five villains. And we'll see so, them on Vivia. And, and it's it's inevitable. Yeah, I agree. It's inevitable. We'll see those characters. So how will the how will the statue hold up versus when when those when those are released, right? So right, those yeah. are things to think about. So for me, I, I don't consider this a blue chip, but it's a, it's. I think it'll do well. I think it'll do well just purely because it looks awesome. It's a really right. cool yeah. yeah, the details on it are amazing. I think it it's looks really cool. beautiful. Yeah. But like you guys said, the Killer Croc, it's not that, you know, it's a first appearance of Killer Croc, so that's great, but it's not that iconic, you know, collectible that everybody knows. Like for me, it's almost, I look at my situation because I wasn't the biggest superhero fan or in the comics. I, I don't, I'm not the expert on that kind of stuff. So things that stand out to me, like the Catwoman, when I saw Catwoman, I was like, oh, this is huge because even I know Catwoman. So yeah. the, oh, it's almost... I look at it as like a blessing kind of that I don't know too much because if I do know something, I know you right away. This is yeah. huge. <laughs> like Killer Croc, I was like, who's Killer Croc? So I didn't really know there. too much about it. And so I think for me, since I don't have too much in-depth knowledge about all these, when something does stand out to me, I know right away, this is like, this is it. When I don't know yeah. something, I think, okay, majority of the world may not know this, but I also have to be aware of the fact that I may not know everything like Deadpool. I'm not the biggest personal fan of Deadpool, never really knew that much, but I had to do the research to understand Deadpool is huge worldwide. He's a huge superhero that many people know. So things like that, I do have to be careful just because I don't know it. You know, many people may still know it. So yeah. things like that, I have to still look at. I think a, a good way to also look at whether or not something is blue chip is like, so in, in a, you know, a, a, a situation where the market, there's just like crazy, crazy euphoria, you know, kind of like what we've been seeing recently. Like, what are the collectibles that people are going to diamond hands? And what are the ones that people are going to be willing to take profits on? Like, Killer Croc, like, that's something that, so, that people are probably willing to take profits on. But, like, right. a Walt statue, like, I think somebody's going to die. 
yeah. that's that's a really good point because right, right now in the market we're seeing a slight dip right since the big surge and it's more of a price correction i mean it was that that yeah. that, that, that was wild yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was every five minutes of updating new market new, new floor record new floor record it was crazy yeah. <laughs> But we're seeing, you know, the wall statue. It's a perfect example. It's it's held strong at around 30k. Mm-hmm. It hasn't dipped very much. So right. that says a lot about the collectible itself. And that's one good thing to look at. Is someone who's new, maybe coming to the VV, VVF right now, definitely pay attention to these surges and corrections, and definitely do what um, Spencer just talked about. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just had a memory blank. Sean just talked about <laughs> because if, if you're able to look at the market and see what collectibles dip what collectibles hold their floor. You can start to see which ones, you know, maybe are the blue chips. Like you talked about the partner statue that's stayed around 30 K people aren't letting that one go. The ones that may dip, maybe it's a lesser valued IP. Those are the ones that you may, you know, be willing to take profits on or see that they're not blue chips. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, I highly recommend everybody check out cherrycharts.com. Uh, that's a great source for all Cherry of that. Cherrycharts is another great one. In, or, in order to learn, you know, w- you know, which collectibles are going up and going down on, you know, over time. So, yeah, yeah great source yeah. of data. Big shout out to our boy, Brendan Cherry. Amazing guy as well. Cherry yeah. charts. <laughs> so on to the second question. This comes from David. Do you think we will be able to list comics on OpenSea? Yeah, so this is a big one. So I know that Vivi has been in talks and partnerships with marvel for a while now right it's not like they just came out of the blue and said oh we got the marvel par- partnership now they had to have been in talks with marvel for a while so i do think that these comics will be interoperable i know the first wave will be the artist collectibles from all these artists and that's going to be like the decon collectibles etc mm-hmm. we'll be able to list them on open sea immutable x and the interoperability will come for the bigger companies later. I think Marvel will be one of the first big companies to allow that. I think Tokidoki will be another big company because Tokidoki was the first license that Vivi got. So I think their relationship is going to be pretty solid. I think that's maybe why we saw Ritmo get animated because they have that flexibility. They're familiar with each other. They have a good relationship. So I do. I do see these comics, especially because there's a good amount of additions. I know compared to millions of users, these are very limited items, but compared to the VV app, they seem like a lot of additions, you know, 60,000, 50,000. Now we're seeing that it's not that many additions, right? Mm -hmm. But I think they did that because also we're going to, the interoperability factor, when we list these on OpenSea, if they only had 5,000 of a comic, that would be nothing. So once we do see these on OpenSea, Immutable X, it's going to go crazy. I, I just, it's a matter of time. Marvel's going to want their IP in different places. It's just, it's just going to be a matter of time. And then I think DC will follow Marvel. I think Marvel will be the first, then DC follows. Yeah. I think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because, I mean, obviously these companies are very, very protective of their IP, um, you know, Marvel especially. Um, so we'll see. I mean, there is a chance that they, they just, in order to, to keep control of everything and make sure that, you know, nothing goes, goes no, awry, yeah. they, they might just keep everything on Vivi and never allow it to, to exit. And I think a lot of it also depends on, uh, the plans for the Vivi verse as well. Um, because I mean, Sean, I'll, I'll let you elaborate on that. Cause you, you like to talk about that, but, um, yeah, here, go ahead, Sean. <laughs> well, my, my, my biggest question is when you if you take these collectibles off vv you lose control yes over the collectibles right so for example like groot for example you know groot is dedicated to the holidays he has accessories around or on him dedicated to the holidays but it would make sense to me to be able to take those off you know to have music that you can celebrate year around right. i remember I, I mean i i recorded a screen recording of him and i put on my instagram story and i put hook, hooked on a feeling of him dancing Right. You didn't have to change the animation, it, and it worked great. It was awesome. So if we could just remove the hat and the Christmas lights, I can play with Groot year round, and that's what you should be able to do. Now the problem is if you take it off the VV, you won't have that flexibility probably anymore. Right. So that's what that's my only. I'm like trying to figure that out, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. I know that that's something that they want to do. I mean, Dan's talked multiple times about Superman, for example, having a golden cape. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm very curious how they're gonna play it play it out with. Um, but at the same time. Man, if they say, nah, we're going to keep all the collectibles on Vivi, that just tells me that Disney's all in on the Vivi verse. Facts. Oh. They're all in, which is a win win. It's really a win win. It's a win win. Yeah. 
that's how people need to assess this, right? Because like it's either they're going to stay on the app and it's going to crush long term no matter what, or you you know you can take them off the app and it's still going to do great, but you're going to be able to make a lot of money up on OpenSea in the open market. So, right. yeah, I don't so the way I see is. the way I see this is exactly what you said: the customization, being able to change the song, change the outfits, etc. Not on the group, but say the Deadpool. I think in the VV verse that will be a possibility. I think we will be able to upgrade our customizations. Maybe you get different color animating lights on the group or a different song. Like you said, you, you stake this amount of Omi, you get rewarded with different upgrades. I thought the same with animations right now, the Spider-Man animation, people think it's kind of corny. I think if you become a master collector with a Spider-Man or something like that, or you stake enough Omi, or maybe just pay for the upgrade, you're going to be able to change the animation. So like, it won't just be the normal Spider-Man. Now, the Spider-Man could do something else. I don't know what Spider-Man else would do, but yeah, I mean, they could basically sell different emotes as NFTs. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yep, different yeah. animations. It's, it's, it's like Fortnite. Too. They have all these different emotes as well, where you you can pay for you know different, different dances dance. and stuff like that. Right. Exactly. It's, I think it's gonna be the same thing with NFTs and and similarly how you reward like you know artistic creator like physical creators. Um, for their art, you know, you will re reward um, like choreographers for coming up with dance moves or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and they'll get the same royalties that artists get on, on NFTs. I could definitely see that. You know, and it's, I think it's interesting. The, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was, it, it, to add to your point, Johnny, uh, it's interesting with the Spider Man Secret Rare specifically. I've always felt his animation isn't necessarily finished. You know, like the, right. the it feels like there's more. And he, and he shoots out like that. Mm -hmm. It just feels like it's kind of it's, it's cut down a little bit or it's mm -hmm. unfinished. And I think that's mm -hmm. very interesting. No one's really talking about that, but I, I've always felt that way since the very beginning. It's, I mean, it's awesome. And I'm right. Yeah. But I feel like there, there could be a potential opportunity to add on or change that animation for sure. I've never actually talked about it out loud. So I'm happy you brought yeah. that up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I, I, I think so too, because I remember seeing some things on, I think it was either Nightwing collectible or the Batman who laughs. They kept saying different things like upgradable customizations and things like that. I have a feeling like that's just what's going to be like in, Right now, the thing about being interoperable, if you send it to OpenSea, you won't have, you won't be able to interact with it, animate it 3D. It'll just be the stationary picture. That's what you have. So I think the, I think it will be interoperable, like same with the comics, but I think the utility, all that extra stuff will only be able to be used on that VV app. So it's like, if you want yeah. to own, if you want to take it off the app and sell it, et cetera, cool, but you won't be able to interact with it, look at it, have all yeah, these. That, that's how they incentivize people to bring it back to the app. And yeah, the master yeah. collector program points too. I think once you sure. send it out there, yeah, you don't get those points anymore. And I think the points are yeah. right now, it's that big debate, right? Do we focus on those big grail collectibles or the MCP points? I think to have a little bit of both. I don't think you should sell a grail for the MCP points, but like if you have extra gems laying around, and you want to, because in order to get these drops in the future, maybe, you know, that the, 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 um, what is it? The action, the, one of the comic books that, one of the grail comic books that haven't dropped yet that are about to drop oh, that's action dropping one. action comics one, or yeah. like one of the First Batman comic, fantasy 15, yeah. fantasy yeah. 15. If that's dropping say three months from now, and you guys want that, you guys are going to be relying on the master collector program points, most likely to lock that one in. So I think. Yeah the mcp points could end up being a big deal in the future but i just think it's not smart to sell like a todd for those mcp points right now I yeah i mean it's also, also like we, we don't really know what the future holds for that yet so i, I wouldn't be you know basing major major investment decisions off of that until right it, yeah. least, until it gets rolled out Facts. yeah yeah I'm, I'm very curious though i'm very curious how it's going to be tied to land <laughs> like because you know that's yeah. going to be it's going to yeah. be really big it's going to be really big so the next question that. is actually oh. from my uh, my brother-in-law chad big shout out to chad shout out to chad <laughs> <laughs> what are some outside the box licenses you'd like to see on vb oh this is a good one this is what i think about all the time <laughs> i don't even <laughs> know if it's po really... not pokemon <laughs> right right no no p word no p word today. <laughs> this one's not really outside the box because i think it will eventually happen but just in what capacity, I'm not really sure. So music, we know music is probably going to come at some point to Vivi, but like, how is it going to be rolled out, right? Like what kind of music NFT would it be? I'm hoping for different ways. I'm hoping we can own, say, you know how there's unlimited songs of your favorite artists on Apple Music? Well, I hope there's a limited, you know, five to 10,000 run of your, of a song that's just came out or maybe an old song that 
from your favorite artist or something like that. So that way you own a one to 10,000 and it's playing in your showroom when everybody comes in and playing that song. Or I was thinking of another way, not just something playing in your showroom, but like a live performance. Say like your favorite hip hop artist or whatever kind of music you may like, a band, et cetera, is playing the live performance and augmented reality in your showroom. So then people are coming to your showroom, not just to interact with your collectibles, but to watch the live show. I feel like that would be amazing. I would be in my showroom all day. Johnny, just to add to that, didn't didn't Dan or in a recent AMA talk about do, uh, connecting music to live performances? Didn't they talk about that recently? I'm not sure. Recently, I would imagine so. I think they have talked about it before. So if it was recently, they probably have. They probably have. I remember. I remember time. coming out and ge- geeking out hard with some friends and telling tell them to explain <laughs> that. To, I spent. So I talked to you about that too, didn't I? I don't. I don't I think, think we talked about that now. Oh yeah, because they, they talked about connecting their NFTs to live like live concerts, and that That's is going to awesome. be massive. Wow. Like that is gonna, how crazy. cool is that? Yeah, that's a really fun opportunity there. Yeah, that's Special amazing. Refunds. Um, let's see, so a license that I'm really excited about, mostly because it was my, it was like basically my start to collecting growing up. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh Ooh, like, okay, Yu-Gi-Oh I got a couple cards. of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I, um, yeah, I think <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh would be sick. I mean, either yeah, whether they did either like collectible cards or if they even just did statues of the of like the Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, like I, I'd be down with with all of it. I think it would be so much fun, um, yeah. especially like. Uh, what do they call like do you remember those uh like the blades that you that you had that you like played the cards in it was kind of like a floating like playing card table do you remember those i don't think i do I, yeah i, I know what you're talking about yeah but yeah, yeah so you basically like you like when, you, when you're playing somebody and you're like dueling somebody you like play the cards like on this like disc like that like attaches to your arm uh okay. so it's kind of like a, a floating <laughs> tabletop uh, that's pretty yeah, cool. I, I think that would be so cool to have as an NFT. Portable table. Just throw it out. It's the AMA, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're, they're so cool. They, they like, they fold up and they like flip out. And it's, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> before you go, Sean, before you go, Sean, that, that just kind of reminded me of, of something. What, what if we had like battle bots or something in the showroom and you could like create your own battle bot and then play with each other, like battle the other person's battle bot. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or not, but I remember growing up watching battle mm-hmm. bots like these little robots bots, yeah with me. what if you could like create your own little robot talking about bots right yeah. <laughs> like you create your own little <laughs> robot and then you could remote Starting control it get flagged now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's gonna flag it um like remote control and literally battle each other in the showrooms to, That'd be so like cool. that would be so cool i love that, I love that wow. so or do, you, do you guys remember um do you remember beyblades that's what made me think of. I was about to say, Maybe, baby. Remember the yeah, shot? I don't, I that might have been. That might have been before or after your time. It's like these like little like little discs. Pull the sorry, string, sorry, right? Sorry, sorry to date you there. Uh, but you, like, you, pull this, like, you rip this thing and it spins around really fast, and like they hit each other. Yep. They're great. But look at baby. Oh no, I know you're talking about. Yeah, I know you're talking about. I think they, they had a TV show, didn't they too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's. I think that's been a toy. It's been around for a while, but they keep like yeah. creating new new terms for it, new new uh, names. Um. <laughs> 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 Harry Potter is definitely one of them for me. Oh, Harry Potter's huge. I know. Uh, big shout out to yeah. Wendy Stavalis. I know she'd uh, be a big fan of here that. She, she's going to freak out when Harry Potter comes to BB. Yeah. I think oh, it's inevitable. <laughs> Wendy, I know she was freaking out when uh, Jeremy Padawar was uh, showing the Harry Potter book that he has. Have you guys oh, seen that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so there's, I think there's less than, I, I don't quote me on the number, but I think there's less than like 100 total editions of like the first, first edition wow. of that printed, of the printed uh, book. It was used, uh, and it was sent only to publishers, like to try to get the book. Yeah, and there's only like a few, like maybe a hundred of them, or less, crazy. probably less. And he has one of them, and apparently it's worth like a half million oh. dollars or more now. Yeah. You know, the one recently sold, which is wild. Um, another one which would be really cool because I'm I'm really high on on cars, like a lot of cars and vehicles in, in the metaverse. Mm-hmm. The, for the future so lamborghini is one that would just be like that would be a lot of fun actually big shout out yeah. to gamma verse for making yeah, a, gamma a versus video. video is awesome his, his content is always amazing if y'all don't uh, haven't been followed uh, follow him or subscribe to him on youtube yet make sure to do so his content is quality puts a oh. lot of research into his in his uh in his videos there's another one specifically on cause which is another artist I'm oh that's like, another good one yeah mm-hmm. another good one. amazing yeah. video amazing video Sure. Um, that'd be <laughs> that'd be absolutely wild but I, I i know one thing that also i'm really excited about before we move forward is is hot wheels like for me oh. like having the opportunity john like imagine this this is this is what really inspired me about vb the use with ar like being able to in the future 3d scan your room 
and, or your, your living room and put tracks all on your walls, on your ceilings and your floors. And then you can use in VR, you can actually ride in a Hot Wheel and ride oh. in the around in your room. Like, I didn't even think about stuff, that part. Uh, how fun would that be? Like that, that, so that cool. like screams my childhood dreams right there. Yeah. Coming to you. fruition, you know? That's you what just added imagine. a whole nother layer. You added a whole nother layer that I didn't even think about. Because that's what I was dreaming of too. I had like a bunch of Hot Wheels cars and I would mm-hmm. make tracks all over the place. Same. And even there, I think there was a video game at one point I played for a little bit that you would like make tracks of Hot Wheels cars and stuff like that. And it was just, yeah. it was literally like that. You would make the track yeah. and everything and then you would be riding in the track, in the car. And yeah. so I didn't even think about virtual reality aspect. You hit the nail on the head. That's going to happen. I didn't even yeah. think about that. And I'm going to definitely do that. 100%. I'm excited <laughs> so for that. Fun. Make a ton of tracks, you know, scan your room, and then literally be in that race car, in that Hot Wheels car, whichever yeah. one you own, because there's yeah. a whole bunch of different ones. I, I wish that's one thing. I talked about it on the interview with Big Collectibles and Doctor Strange. Um, I said one thing I really liked was the Hot Wheels cars, because I had a bunch of them, like awesome cars, too, though. If I kept them in great condition, probably worth a lot. But I was one of those kids that, like, played with them, do them around and mm-hmm. stuff. But Well, just so you know, the, the actual Hot Wheels, they, uh, like, I think probably like two months ago they released uh on, on the wax blockchain they released a series of uh, oh that's awesome of, of hot wheels yeah it was uh it was cool it was one of their like virl virtual in real life releases where um if you got like the highest rarity hot wheel you could actually redeem it for a like an exclusive physical hot wheel so you've oh, got like, the, cool. the nft and the physical counterpart that they'll send you as well i think we're gonna see a lot more of that kind of stuff it makes sense right you tie them yeah. digital to physical dan shawble's been big on that lately i mean he hit yeah. the nail right on the head yeah, so. he's on point. He's on point. I mean, you look at the look at the Todd statues. I mean, last month yeah. we got them for about two hundred dollars, the first edition, and now I mean, they're on eBay floors around a thousand dollars. I think I mean, even two thousand now. Yeah, two thousand. It's 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 oh, it's one hundred percent the VV community. One hundred percent the VV. Like no question, Agreed. it's one hundred percent. They came in and just swept the fuck out of that entire uh, eBay floor. <laughs> and the stores are like, what is happening right now? Like, yeah. these haven't sold them forever. Like, yeah, nobody's going? ever bought these statues. <laughs> You know what's funny too? Um, the vault, VV Vault. He was doing live stream so much with the time. Like he does the time syncing. Like he syncs it with the time website, time.io or whatever. And supposedly the, the owner of that website had so much traffic to the website recently. Was like, what's going on? Why is everyone looking at my time? Like he wrote like a message on the website, like shout out to the VV community or something like that. <laughs> like that's, that's wild, right? Like that's amazing that's and yeah and it's gonna happen with these comic books too you know people nice. are gonna be excited and they're gonna want to collect them and then they're gonna get branch out and want to collect other stuff it's really like, cool. look at me i never would have imagined in a million I- i'm years. on your background <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know, look at all those comics oh. i see you <laughs> got a few of them up there let's yeah, go I love, it. I love it i love it this one just looks like it's like bad because the light's shining on it right now like the glare <laughs> but it's so cool so this question, next oh. question comes in from from <laughs> comes in from Damien. Do you have any long term plans in the VV verse? So I, I'm presuming this question is saying, do you have any plans for land ownership, or do you have any plans for opening businesses, uh, brands? What do you? Yeah, what, absolutely. What are you I I love talking about this stuff because this is kind of where my head's at, like all throughout the day, right? I'm kind of like living in the future mentally right now. So I do. I think there's a lot of big opportunities for everybody in the VV verse that's coming. It's just another digital world. And anybody who's not familiar with it, it's just like another virtual world that we're going to be living in called the VV-verse. And that's obviously going to be developed in iterations, right? Step by step. It's probably just going to start out with like a multiplayer showroom type thing. Right now we can visit each other's showrooms. Soon it's going to be like a, I can visit Sean's showroom with him in there, probably together at some point. That's kind of how I imagine the iteration starting out. And then it'll be like the VV city. Now, I think there's a bunch of different opportunities. Like I was saying, renting out collectibles, like Sean said, with the vehicles, if you're someone who's stacked up on the DeLoreans or maybe the Ghostbusters car, other vehicles that drop in the future. Hoverboards. That, hoverboards are a big one too. I think we're going to be able to walk around at like a certain speed. So it may take like, you can still get to every spot to anybody who doesn't have a car or vehicle or hoverboard. But in order to get places faster, you may want to take a rent out a hoverboard from somebody who's stacked up. So I think renting, if you stacked up on hoverboards, you can rent them out to people from get the place to place in the showroom or I mean in the VV city. I think also another one is brand branding opportunities. When I say that, I think of Coca-Cola right away as a sponsorship. This is another reason why I think building your in-app followers 
is crucial. Building a following. It's just like building a following on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Well, now it's on Vivi as well, too. So there's a whole bunch of different things that can happen with a big following on Vivi. First, I'll talk about with the sponsorships like Coca-Cola. Maybe Coca-Cola wants to sponsor you guys because you guys have a couple Coca-Cola NFTs and they see the traffic coming in your showrooms. So they think, OK, they have 10,000 followers on Vivi, on Vivi. Let me sponsor them, maybe give them 100K a year to have their Coca-Cola right away in their showroom because everyone's coming in, looking at all the comics. They have so many people coming in a day. Let's put that Coca-Cola snow globe in there. And then that way it drives all that traffic to hopefully Coca-Cola. So I think we're going to be able to see brand partnerships going on in the future. Like I got the Coca-Cola 777 mint for that exact reason to kind of try to synchronize the brand with Johnny Dunn 777 has the 777 Coca-Cola. Like, so stuff like that, I've been already kind of thinking about hoping that pays out in the future. I've got the 3000 followers. So I'm still grinding on VV. Killing it, Johnny. (laughs) Thank you, man. Thank you. And (laughs) the thing is, eventually we're going to have the search feature ability to search for everybody's profile so it's going to be easier yeah. then but by then i think a lot of people will be unless you already have a big name in the community it's going to be kind of saturated so i'm trying to think of ways to stand out so yeah. that's one way of trying to building it up now also dan dan shabbos talked about this a lot when you have say ten thousand followers five thousand followers etc you have that many people able to come to your showroom instantly i have a new i picked up a new collectible uh, post a showroom you can have 5,000 10,000 people coming in your showroom instantly and if you have an admission fee maybe you have you know a hundred thousand five hundred thousand million dollar showroom ten million dollar showroom one day who knows people will want to pay you know a couple dollars maybe it's just a dollar maybe it's a two dollar for a whole day whatever the case may be you know I, I don't know about the price points but just for example that's that's a passive income stream for so many people at just 3,000 followers a dollar a day, you know, that could be a lot of money yearly. So Definitely. Think, up. no question. So I think just getting on that early and some things that I've been doing, if anybody's wondering, you know, how do you build the in-app following? It's a grind for sure. Just like grinding on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, interacting with people, engaging with the community, making posts, posting pictures. And then and another, another big thing that I've done recently was just listing all my big collectibles, like the partner statue, the um, Batman, uh, the ones that I think people are going to be looking up, I've listed mine for the top price. So it's just another way not to show off really, but just to say, show people like, oh, it's up there. It's an easy way for people right now to click on your username and to follow you because the search, search feature is not there. So just some things that have helped me big time and not give up. I think it's one of the thing, one of those algorithm things. Like if you don't, if you're not active, for a certain amount of weeks, whatever, it may be harder to get that following back. So just consistency, you know, post a day, co- post a couple times a day, stuff like that. So that's a really good point. Cool. That's a really good point, Johnny. Like just that, some things man. I've been thinking about big time for, for the last yeah, couple of Yeah, you brought so many important points right there, man. Yeah, it's it's yeah, man, it, it's tough to navigate through this app right now, but we know that it's it's inevitable that this thing is only, is only going to get better. It's going to be yeah. much easier to navigate through, find users, interact, but you set yourself up for such a huge success. You've already built a brand, you know, yeah. and, 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 and a name in the community, and you're just fucking awesome, dude. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. appreciate that big time. But that's the thing, though, too, is um, like you said, building the brand is key. Like I wasn't one of those people to go and spam the comments follow for follow um, because I felt like I was telling people. You know, use a fire emoji or say like, can't wait, or just anything besides like begging people to follow you and you're following back because I think that's just going to hurt your brand. I was telling people it's going to hurt your brand, but people weren't really thinking about brand back then. They were just thinking about, you know, let me get the followers. But I think the followers are there for a reason. The sets are there for a reason. The, The collectibles, which will be comics too, are there for a reason. So I've been, I mean, like you said, the app's not perfect right now. There's a lot of improvements that can be made and will be made on the social feed. It could be frustrating. You go to tag somebody and, you know, it exit outs on the screen or it lags or something, but, you know, it's a grind. That's why I say it's not the easiest thing in the world right now, but it will yeah. be easy eventually. And, and just so everyone knows, like right now, we're in the middle of a migration to Mutable X. Mm-hmm. Like they can't, right. I, I try to, because like everyone's frustrated. Why doesn't the app work? Why can I search? Why can I? The reason why is because right now there it's it's about steps. It's about accomplishing steps before you you know you, you've got to accomplish one, two, and three before you start on five. Right. Right. So it's like in film production, 
you know, when you're in your post-production, you're working on a video, you have to edit you know, the video first before you start doing color correction or sound mixing. Because if you work on those things first, you need to make changes to the, the video edit and you're just going to do unnecessary backtracking and creating a ton of unnecessary work. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to follow the steps. You got to follow the steps and it's going to work out. It's going to work out long-term guys. So I'm very excited about yeah, the future sure, of the BB sure. application. So Spencer, yeah. what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, the only definitive plans that I have for the VBverse is to buy as much land I, as I can and just hold on for dear life. That's that's pretty much it. That's a great I, uh, plan right there. Don't, don't really have any, any specific <laughs> plans. But, but, the but, whale. but jo <laughs> Johnny, as, as you were talking there, I um, I did come up with an idea, Sean, that I, I think we should debut right now. I think this is something that, that maybe we should work on for the VBverse. I think maybe we should open up a comics and crypto comic book shop in the VB verse oh, sure. and almost like duplicate the in-person experience where if somebody wants to buy a comic book, but don't know what to do and wants to ask questions, they can actually go into a store in virtual reality and talk to somebody behind the counter who can answer their questions and help like direct their purchase. Absolutely. I absolutely love that. And I was just about to say to grow on your idea, you guys are going to get so big. You guys are going to be hiring comic book experts to be in your store every day like a real job like i just saw in this one metaverse to where there was a casino and this one guy's real job is to put on the headset four or five hours a day and be in the virtual casino and direct people where is that no, the craps table here's the and like he was just introducing people and i could see a comic showroom being the same thing like here's the the grail comics here's the silver age etc and you know this is what i would focus on and just someone to talk to in the comic store so that's definitely going to be and, something that you and, guys can do. And guys, to take that even further, imagine this. Imagine like Todd McFarlane, for example, coming to the metaverse, coming to a comic book shop. And, you and does a signing sign, in the shop. It does a signing oh, in the shop. God. Or the statues. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> no, it's going to get crazy. That's a great. And, and, and when you hit on first, the land. Land is going to be crucial. That's another thing I didn't really touch on. I want to buy as much land as I possibly can as well. Because yeah. it's going to be digital real estate is going to be huge if you think real estate's big okay this is why i think this is the difference ready physical show physical stores are amazing right to own a physical store like you did a great job right you own that but it's kind of limited you can only have it open for maybe eight hours a day and it's localized to where only people around your area can come to that five days a week well when you mm -hmm. open that same store digitally now you're open 24 7 seven days a week and you're open to the entire globe the whole world at any point so it's your your comics book store is going to have an endless line of people you know <laughs> non-stop trying to get in because especially like Tom McFarlane maybe he comes in one day into your virtual store and now you have a guest appearance from Tom McFarlane in your comic book shop and you are you guys are just going to have lines of people coming in brands will be paying you guys to have their coca-cola snow globe in there um, because t why would they not? You're getting thousands of people a day walk in. So that's where I s my mind's been living at because I'm trying to correlate everything I'm doing to kind of meet something just like that. So you guys hit the nail on the head right there. I can't wait to come into your comic shop. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be fun. So this, this next question comes in from Alethea. What is your most sentimental and most valuable comic or collectible? So what is your most sentimental and most valuable I'll do both comics, comics, and, comics and collectibles. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my most sentimental comic book would definitely, I have two actually. Easily Marvel Comics number one, the common that I got, the three digit, because I'll tell the story about this one. So late November, I got this like craze to where I started loving the three digit comic books. And so I really mm -hmm. wanted to kind of have the same physical counterpart as the digital or same digital as like the physical counterpart. And so I was going around trying to get all these comic books that I knew were grails, thanks to you guys, like the Fantastic Four number one. I picked that one up for like 400 bucks, I think it was in the market at the time. The Ultimate Fallout picked that one up for like, this is wild. I picked up a three digit 300 mint for I think 150 bucks, maybe. Wow. Um, maybe it was like 120. It was something stupid, stupid, cheap, um, crazy cheap. And then Amazing Spider-Man num number one, I picked up for a couple hundred bucks. Basically, I picked up like all these Grail comics for cheap, except for the Marvel comics number one. I made like a collage of all the comics together. I posted it out. I was like, this is like my favorite thing in the world. I can't believe I achieved this, but I didn't get the Marvel comics number one. It was like 1500 at the time. 
And after I posted that, it was like December 1st, late November. Didn't think anything was going to happen. A few weeks go by. I tried getting the money to get the Marvel Comics number one. It's like 2,500 now. I'm like, oh no, what is happening? The whole, <laughs> the whole common three digit thing became like a thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh Jesus, I didn't get the one I really wanted yet. So I was making some trades, making some sales, finally got enough gems to go back and get it. I think I got it for like 25, maybe 2,600. Way more than I wanted to pay at the time, but I just wanted to lock that in so bad. Mm -hmm. Now I think the floor is like eight, maybe 9K on those. So I'm pretty happy that I did. And that's my most sentimental one because it's obviously the first comic book ever on VV, Marvel Mm -hmm. Comics number one. Don't have to tell you guys how much that comic book, you know, me. (laughs) So for me, that was like my most sentimental comic book. My most valuable comic. Oh, it might not even be that one, to be honest. Yeah, um, two for. <laughs> but I mean, I have the ultra rare Fantastic Four number one. That I think that that could go pretty well. It's not a low mint one though. Um, I'm gonna have to think about what's my most valuable comic. I'm not too sure. It might be that one, but my other sentimental, emotionally attached one that I like a lot. Sean knows this one. It really wasn't that emotionally attached until after a while I started growing on it. The secret rare dark hawk <laughs> really that now the cool. reason, yeah. now the reason why is this one i like so much is because i saw in the marketplace for cheap for 500 bucks i was like wow it's a three digit it's a three digit secret rare so i was nice. like 500 bucks seems way too low to be a three digit secret rare i know it's not a valuable it's dark hawk it's not like a grail but i just bought it because first i needed a secret rare i bought a floor for 300 i was like what's the lowest mint number i went and saw it was a 500 dollar six something mint i was like why did i just buy the first one for 300 i, I bought it before i looked so i bought that one next for 500 <laughs> flip flip the 300 dollars one just for a small profit but mm-hmm. i was gonna sell this three digit secret rare for like 10k and be like i'll profit 10k off this but the more i kept thinking about it i was like man this is a three digit secret rare i don't know how many other chances i'm going to get to own one of these let alone if it's dark yeah. off or not i don't think i'm gonna be able to own another one so i was like oh, i'm keeping it i listened for like 50k at one point i was like if it sells it sells it's 50k <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the artwork on it i love so much to where i'm just visioning in my house a three digit with that artwork to me yeah. it just feels so clean like that's my collector in me. ROI wise, yeah. I should probably sell it for 10K. But like, that's something that I just love so much looking at to where I'm, I'm like visioning a, a clean three digit <laughs> number, being able to see that in the showroom one day. So like, that's just another comic book that I love so much. Um, well, it's cool too. It's like that, 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 what was that? Well, no, no, I was going to say, I add to that. I mean, that comic is, is a spec book. I mean, there's been rumors before it even dropped on Vivi that, that Dark Hawk was going to get uh, his own show on Disney Plus. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the comic book, physical comic book, has been a hot commodity for over the past year and a half. Like, okay. the price of that comic book has, has definitely gone up in value quite significantly, going from, like, $100. and very confident it's past 300 possibly up to four, maybe 500 now. Okay. Um, definitely up to at least three, 300 as a 9.8 grade. And, yeah, the popularity of that comic, I think, is going to grow over time. And especially if he joins the MCU. or not, Well, if he's on Disney+, Plus, he's going to be in the MD, yeah. MCU. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it's a very strong possibility. The story is awesome. It's very cool. And I think it fits that 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 criteria of what Disney Plus is looking for. Mm. So I got story to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, Johnny, when you did that, I was like, you know what? John, I've been kind of sleeping on that comic for a while. And again, this is not financial advice to anybody. This is just right. us. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I've, you know, for me, Johnny, like I always just like focus on grails and silver age keys and it's still very important and it's still my, my, mm-hmm. my priority. Right. But at the same time, I'm also thinking about, okay, these modern age comics, when it comes down just to popularity and accessibility, this comic and like Ultimate Fallout 4, mm-hmm. you know, having the opportunity to buy these comics instantly, I don't think it's going to, the popularity is going to meet the demand, Right. you know? So yeah. I think there could be some serious opportunity here. And especially, I mean, we're already seeing a lot of modern age comics uh, outbeat on and, and VV outbeat their physical counterparts. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I, yeah, I, I think there's really a lot of opportunity here for that as well. <laughs> potentially, potentially, keep your ear to the ground, <laughs> guys, on that one. Yeah, yeah hopefully, more, as, I, as, I wish as, I got another comic. <laughs> yeah, I picked news- a, I picked up a low man, low man common dark hawk. I think it was like a you know top two oh, percent. Solid, solid. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, I got a number three. I like the, the drop. Yeah, oh, really? and then I. I 
And then I, yeah, then I picked up a secret rare for like, I think 600, like a number 950 or nine nice. something. And uh, yeah, cause I was talking to John, I saw Johnny pick that up and I was like, all right, well, <laughs> now I didn't, and now I, I'm gonna regret not getting this. And sure enough, I made it out for 600 and now the floor is like 700. Yeah. So like, absolutely. all right, sweet. <laughs> the floors ran up big time. And what I think up? the comics have so much room to grow. Once we can put them in the showroom, we can't even put these in the showroom yet to show off. Yeah. So I think, like for exactly. me, I'm not the biggest comic fan, but it's Vivi's turned me into one. And now I can't wait to not only display them in my showroom, but on the profile too. So mm-hmm. yeah. I think comics are about to boom once we're able to do that. Like I was looking and I was like, okay, obviously everyone knows I love the, the three digit comments a lot, right? But I'm looking mm-hmm. at the secret rares and I'm like, $300? Three hundred, because that's I paid three hundred dollars for that first Dark Hawk, and I'm like, and I only did that because I loved the cover art on that, because I knew Dark Hawk, like you said, it was a spec book. Well, I didn't know it was a spec book, but I knew it wasn't like the Holy Grail book, right? So I was like, dang, three hundred dollars I spent on like not a great comic book, but I kept looking at it, and I just loved the art on it so much. It had like the space vibe on it, the, like the colors on it, were just it just hit me. So I did. I bought it for three hundred, but like I said, I was like, well, let me just see what the lower mints are going for. And that's when I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. Why didn't I check this first? Mm-hmm. Bad mistake right there. So I flipped the $300 one, barely for any profit, just to just get it off real quick. I need the gems. I was really upset at myself that I just bought that one first. Didn't buy the low mint, but I am going to hold that low mint because, like I said, I don't know if I'm ever going to get a three-digit secret rare ever again. So like, <laughs> it's, it's going to be hard. It's, it's only going to get harder, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, facts. Exactly, exactly yeah. man. Exactly. <laughs> Like, oh, i don't see a secret rare going under 1k once we can put these in our showroom like yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, it's very right. possible I, I i yeah i mean the demand They're is all super limited out of control yeah. so like for like collectibles um yeah collectibles most most sentimental probably nightwing just because it was my first drop <laughs> yeah um most expensive is definitely secret rare, secret rare spider-man That's um cool. and then for comics um most sentimental. Um, I, I don't know if it's sentimental, but I, I'm just like very proud of this snipe. I got a um, like a number five hundred something, uh, Fantastic Four number one common for like ten dollars that I sniped on the market. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Ten dollars. Wait, wait yeah, so that, what, what was it? What was it again? It was a what? Num- number five hundred mint Fantastic Four number one common that I snapped on the market for ten dollars, ten gems. Wow. Back like like right right after it, you know, basically right after it dropped. Uh, so you know feel bad johnny for sold it to me but thank you this is kind of amazing actually so johnny uh, spencer from the very beginning like when the comic books dropped he's like always like focus on the top top five percent always oh, like smart. just focus on top of, but so if you can folks but, but ideally focus on the top two percent but top five percent so when that when marvel dropped i mean we just ignored the floors for seven gems. Literally ignored I mean, the floor, like, I which I kind of regret right now. Like, I kind of wish I just <laughs> right, right. bought like hundreds of MC1s. <laughs> right. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But, Can you imagine? The fact that we were able to focus on those low mints, we were able to pick up some really, really low mint uh, Marvel Comics yeah. 1. Wow, that's and, uh, and especially now recently uh, for the MCP program, they announced that if you have a, a comic book and their definition is like the bottom 5, 5% right. available to the public, then you get 50% bonus points. So mm-hmm. Spencer, man, like good call. Like, you, yeah. nailed huge. you nailed that shit, dude. That's, That's huge. getting a lot of MCP bonus That's points. Incredible. I, I have yeah. so many top 5% collectibles now because of Spencer's advice. And yeah. and now like it's it's gonna help out big time with MCP. So that's a different I probably, I probably have more, I probably have more like sub 1000 mints than I do of like like yeah. floor mints That's or whatever. Crazy. You know what I mean? Like I I like we've we've really focused on the low mints. Um, we did, and that, yeah. that, that, that early. You to, guys did too. Yeah, yeah. early. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that brings me to the most expensive comic. Uh, so this is a comic that Sean and I actually went in together on. Um, so we got the Secret Rare, uh, Fantastic Four number five uh, for oh, appearance Doom. of Doctor Doom, uh, mint number like five hundred something. Um, oh, so it's five eighty five. Yeah, five eighty five. I think around there. I think it's five eighty five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's yeah, hard. so <laughs> we, we, to our knowledge, it's the second lowest. Uh, according to vbrank.com, it's it's the the second lowest mint number. Big shout, big shout to, our, 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 yeah, yeah, big shout to our boy sleeping. If you haven't checked out vbrank.com, you definitely need to. It's an amazing, amazing website that shows the rankings for a lot of collectibles and uh, collectibles being released. So definitely check it out. Shout out to sleeping. Mm-hmm. Shout out to sleeping. Um, but yeah, man, that that was to me like, oh man, that's. 
that was such a sentimental grail for me because that's oh, I've always either. wanted to. Yeah, like no, like Spencer, like I'm so. <laughs> I'm that's so an awesome like, cover too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a smart yeah. move. Right I, was so, I was so happy that you picked that up, man. That's a really cool one. Yeah. Um, for, oh, and then for, I, for, and I guess another one to add as a as a close second. I also personally own um, Avengers number eight, Secret Rare number seven twenty. Ooh. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. that Red Wolf yeah. uh, 80? Avengers, Avengers number oh. 80? Avengers number 8. Oh, 8. Yeah. Yeah. The first, first, first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, yeah so that's only 10,000 10, editions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, total in that, in that run. What, what did you pick that that's, one up for, if you don't mind me asking? Do you um, it's probably, probably four or 5,000, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's a well great done, one right buddy. there, man. Well done. That's an awesome one. I, yeah, I think Kang will do great. I think Kang's oh yeah yeah i'm excited for his uh for his his the next phase of the mcu because he's going to be a big part of it very yeah. excited for his character when i, very, when very I had to look up character. some stuff i saw that and i was like oh this is why it's oh gonna okay be- <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it's gonna be wild it's gonna be wild um and uh so yeah for me man i think for me like i had an opportunity to buy a fantastic four one comic maybe about like, three years ago and i chickened out <laughs> oh, i chickened out yeah i mean like that yeah and that always haunted me it always haunted me and when this comedy dropped i told myself i'm going to i'm going to try to get a secret rare that's going to happen i'm going to get one and i saw a number 883 sitting there on the market and i was like okay shit i need to get that so before i think it was around like 700 gems at the time wow. this was like 2500 this is 2500 and i'm like i will regret my entire life if i don't get this so I'm like, I'm like buying gems, like I mean, sets of 600 or 600, <laughs> five, five. and it was still sitting there. And I was like panicking, I'm like <laughs> buying all these gems, but like, you know, it could be gone in a second. Yeah. And sure enough, I got it and I still own to this day. And that's something I probably Ooh. want to, I know, man. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome one. That's, I mean, that's something I want to pass on to my, to my future kids one day, you know? So yeah. I was really, really proud of that, uh, that per- purchase. Probably that's another my one I like the cover of a lot too. Those, both those Fantastic mm-hmm. Fours are yeah. awesome coverage for sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely two great comic books too. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But it, yeah, and that, that and the Walt statue, like those two for me oh, are like, yeah. I mean, because I'm a, such a big Disney fanatic, and okay, Spencer so knows it's a, mm-hmm. it's almost borderline yeah. psychotic how big of a yeah. Disney fan oh, I am. Obsessed. I mean, like. That's Wally right there. Oh Show wow, me. I didn't even yeah. notice that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's Wally. <laughs> yeah. So you have to have the Wally golden moment then too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got the set, dude. I got the well, set. Yeah, we got the set. That was the one time I was like, I will give up everything in my besides the FF one. I'll give up everything yeah. in my collection to get that. Make sure I get those sets. But I got pretty lucky on the drop. You know, I didn't give up on. I just kept kept trying to trying to get some nice mm-hmm. rebounds, and it yeah, worked nice. out pretty well. Yeah. Nice, nice. I, I got so lucky because with those golden moments, before that happened, I said to myself, okay, I'm only going to get a few golden moments. You know, I'm only going to get the ones I like a lot. I'm not going to get the whole set. And mm-hmm. little by little that week, I was like, oh, no, I got to get every single one of these. This is yeah. going to be huge. <laughs> so, you like, got the set, too. You got the set, too. Yeah, right? I, I, I was lucky I got the full set. I was making some sales, like, throughout that week. I, I got the full set right before Walt dropped. And then nice. – I, I made the mistake of not having – I didn't get enough gems after I got the set to have gems on deck for when Walt dropped. So when Walt dropped, I went for the drop, didn't get the drop. And I'm sitting there like, oh, no, man, this is going to be huge. I, I screwed up. I didn't prepare myself for this moment. So I was like, okay, I need to do something. So I, it's funny because I actually did it on the live stream. Like very end, I was listening every one of my big collectibles freaking out, delisting. I think I listed it. Todd <laughs> delisted it. Listened to my Nightwings, delisted it. Listened to my Dragon Girls, delisted it. Couldn't figure out what to sell to get the wall <laughs> freaking out like stressed out eventually i i pounced on one of my duplicate javinci's i think javinci's gonna be yeah. iconic like yeah. Be yeah um but i had a duplicate so when Walt was at sitting at like i sold enough duplicates to get my first wall at 2.6k and i felt great nice. about that i depleted a lot of my oh, fa yeah. harleys fa jokers i love those but i had to get wall before it ran up it was like 2.6k pounced on that and I'm sitting there with one Walt, two Da Vinci's, and Walt was like 2.8K. I'm like, this is my chance right now. Why is Walt Disney the last one of this iconic moment, like less than the Da Vinci? I know Da Vinci is going to be huge, but so it was just instantaneous gut feeling. I could have been wrong, but I, I trust my gut. Sold the Da Vinci for 4K, 4.1K. By the time that sold, Walt ran up 
to like 3.5k there's only like a couple left before 4k i'm like oh my god hurry up hurry up yeah <laughs> so i bought the wad at 3.6k i was like oh my gosh had some gems left over went to sleep woke up and Walt was like 8k I was like, oh, my gosh. The biggest win. Yeah. I'm so oh, happy for you, Germany. That's such a good move. I was That's like, oh, my feeling. God. Because I've been stressing out, like, this, like, with everything else going on, I've been stressing out making these huge moves to try to increase my collection. And mm-hmm. one wrong move, I could have messed up big time. Oh, you, you, you nailed it. That was incredible. Yeah. Move. Incredible. Move. That's like, a great move. Man. You know, Congratulations. I, it was, re- it was you, really man. cool. Um, last night, I was on a, a Twitter space talking about <laughs> this collectible and the kind of utility that it could have at Disneyland. Um, man, it, the possibilities are just endless. But at the same time, I, was, I, I asked them, I said, guys, how many possible owners of the entire collection can there be? I mean, there's literally people who have a hundred statues themselves. Like yeah, Dr. Prophet. Right. Dr. Yeah. Prophet has 200 statues. Of no, he doesn't. Plus the, plus the people Holy who have multiple shit. sets. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Prophet owns <laughs> 200. Apparently, yeah, that's what they're saying. Oh last my night. god, I can't that's one 100. person, guys, one person owns 200. Like, I'm happy with two. That's wild, guys. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. So, Crazy. I mean, let's, let's think about it. I wouldn't be surprised if there's less than a thousand people in the entire world that own that entire set. I believe it because less than a thousand, and you got three right here. <laughs> wild, <laughs> wild. And I do think we're gonna see utility with Disney. I think they're gonna wait though until like a year anniversary. Or because yeah. they want to make sure that the collectors have them. They don't want to be like, all right, you know, after we dropped our first NFTs a month later, utility. Like, I think they will. Right. Yeah. Maybe let space grow, let more people come in. Yeah. yeah let more Johnny. people come in, let more and more drops happen. We're finally seeing it's another awesome. Disney drop, the, yeah. the next Mickey Mouse and Friends. Like, I think, when did they drop? When was the first Disney drop? December? Um, Is November? November, so November, think, yeah, around November. Yeah, I would, if I was the guest, put a guess on when they would come out and announce utility. Probably after their or on their yearly anniversary, like sure, that like one sense. year ago, mm-hmm. one anniversary. Congratulations to all the set holders! Still, you get a free pass for life to Disney World or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's yeah. gonna be crazy Imagine. like that, but it, I think exactly they only have every incentive to make them more valuable for themselves because they get a big percentage too on every yeah. recent. So exactly, yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, it's literally, it makes everything that you just said makes hundred percent sense. And it's their, it should be their mission to make these the most valuable NFTs exactly. on VV, but not just VV, but the entire internet. Like they, that should if be. If artist collectibles can add utility to these, if yeah. artists individual can add utility to these NFTs, why wouldn't a $300 billion corporation like Disney be able to add oh, the yeah. best utility possible? And Dan, Dan's been talking about how Dan Crothers has been saying, we want to give these NFTs like value. We want to give them yeah. extra value over yeah. and over again for the rest of our lives. And, so, and, and Johnny, and that's exactly it, right? And that's why I love I love investing in big IP like Disney because yeah. they have the resources to literally turn the statue into a two hundred thousand dollars statue overnight. Yeah. They could do that if they wanted to, but they're, they're going to take their time. They got way too many. <laughs> they, FA, they, got way, they got way too many FA princesses coming coming our way. So like, <laughs> it yeah. makes sense to spread it out. But when that comes, it's going to be incredible. And especially, I mean, when there's 10 million people on this app, man. And, and, the, and the crazy thing is, like you said, about potentially if you own the wall statue or the entire collection, you get free access to Disney for life. I mean, it'll add tremendous value to all the statues across the board. But um, yeah, I mean, it also, it, probably not many people are probably going to use that, uh, use that uh, utility, right? But they mm-hmm. just want to say that they have the option to do it. That's Facts. the big thing. Yeah. A lot of people around the world on that statue, and they can't go to Disneyland like immediately, right? But and just to say that they have the opportunity to do it. And that's the, the flex point. of having it. Yeah. Right. The flex of having it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The flex of having it. So, and being yeah, able with all times. the travel restrictions coming out, with all the, like, we're not, last year, I think it was last year, right? 2020, two years ago with COVID. Yeah. Disney was probably sitting there saying, we lost a lot of money. People weren't able to come to our physical parks this year. If this was ever to happen again, how can we make sure this never happens again, right? How can people come yeah. to our parks digitally? Boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, maybe yeah. it's maybe it's like the passes free pass to Disney World, but also you get the free pass in the digital Disney World for life. Sure. Mm-hmm. The utility in the metaverse. Yeah. We haven't even touched that. Yeah, there's definitely right. possibilities there. That, that, and that is endless possibility. Truly endless possibility. Endless, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, so the, uh, this next question comes in from Heather. Have many comic collectors already joined Vivi 
or are we still early? I would say there's only a few. I mean, a few. I'm sure there's more than a few, but I would say the comic collectors really haven't gotten into the space. I think you guys would be able to tell me a little bit more, but I, from my opinion, looking at it, I think we have some comic collectors in here. And I think they're starting to pour in slowly but surely. I think right now, maybe a lot of comic collectors are still kind of against NFTs in, in that space. I look at it the same way parents were against Facebook at first. Well, their kids got on Facebook and then what happened? The parents slowly started to get on Facebook. They wanted to be around their kids. Then the grandparents got on Facebook. They started to open up their minds a little bit and say they want to be around their family. So comic collectors, I think they're going to start to open up to this space more and more say, oh, wait, okay, this is actually licensed by Marvel. I think Marvel will start to actually advertise a little bit more and say, okay, comic collectors, are you, you mm -hmm. those are that are into the Marvel Comics number one, Fantastic Four number one, all these comics in real life, we'll go get the counterpart now on VV. We saw them kind of tweet out here and there when the drop happens, but I expect commercials to happen one day eventually, maybe more advertisement on their websites because it's going to help their brand as well. So, yeah. 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 I, I, um, I, think, we're, I think we're super early still. I mean, like, Sh Sean and I, we've gone to a bunch of comic book shops and just, like, talked to the owners when we're in there, like, hey, like, by the way, like, while we're buying this comic, have you heard of VB? And we show, and almost none of them have, have heard of it before. Um, even like when we went to LA Comic Con, uh, you know, at the beginning of December, uh, so few people had heard of it. Even like, um, was it like Donnie Cates, who one of his covers is actually on VB. Like he didn't even, he didn't even hurt, he'd never heard of it before. Thanos, uh, uh, Johnny, Th Thanos 13, uh, first appears in Cosmic Ghost yeah. Rider. That's, oh, yeah, which so cover, we, which cover is his cover? And he, he had no uh, idea that his, his work was even on the app. He had never, he had no idea that he didn't he, exist. He, he, so he did the artwork and the story. Yeah. Thanos wow. 13. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh. <laughs> so we literally, I gave it to him because I, I had him sign up for a friend of the friend of the podcast and like a digital on the, on the image, right? Right. And he's just like, wait, you want me to sign your iPad? <laughs> like, what, do you, what do you want me to do like, that's actually know, sean the fact that you have some of the first signatures because you have we went to the decon so you had some of these collectibles signed right not decon but la comic con yeah okay la comic con that but you funny. have you have some of your vv collectibles comic signed right so we get so yeah it was for yeah for friends yeah it was for so other hold on we didn't actually do it for ourselves we, we probably should have done yeah. some for ourselves too i didn't think oh that. okay okay I, it's it's okay it's okay because the thing is at the end yeah. of the day unfortunately these aren't like verified they're just images right. and right. it was just more yeah. for our buddies you know uh right. yeah of the podcast and we wanted yeah. to make sure they had that opportunity and right, the, the right. cool really cool too was i mean even though that donny cates was a bit disconnected he'll he'll understand more in the future but mm -hmm. uh, rob liefeld totally got it and rob wow. liefeld's the creator of deadpool and he's wow. awesome. And, yeah. And Rob Weifeld's like, he was so excited about it. He said, this is the first time I've ever signed my, my NFBB comic. This is the first time I've ever signed yeah. it. And he was so excited about it. He actually took the iPad back and took a photo of it. Took a photo of it, yeah. <laughs> he tweeted it himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was super yeah. cool. That was super, super cool. That's awesome. Yeah, but um, he, he was familiar with BB <laughs> and with all this because, because he actually created the Deadpool character. Um, he gets royalties. So whenever yeah. you know the BB NFT comics sell, he actually gets a cut of that. Whereas Don oh, Cates, okay. he he didn't create the Thanos character. He just drew drew the book. So he, you know, it was kind of like a one time contract deal for him to to do right. that cover. Um, but yeah, but he doesn't get royalties because he didn't create the cover. We actually, I'm very excited to announce this. We've actually got our first sponsorship That's with cool, yeah. Elite. Com yeah, yeah, with Elite Comics Eleven. Big shout out to Elite Elite Comics Eleven. They are a virtual store and escrow service for comic books. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Johnny. Johnny, you bought a comic book. Let's go. Yeah, you got the Elite Comics. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That was actually my first comic book. Yeah. There oh, you go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Awesome. So Johnny bought Elite this comic Comics. from Elite Comics 11. That's so cool, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Shout That's out to Dan awesome. Schauble. He's the one who told me about Elite Comics. So I went over there and. Uh, oh, yeah. Great That's service. Amazing. That's very amazing. fast. Amazing. Service. Amazing. Yeah. They're a wonderful yeah. group of guys. They're awesome. Yeah. They we have... both, we bought tons of comics through them. We, and now they're we're, they're accepting crypt <laughs> that's why you put the case on it <laughs> all right oh, um, <laughs> let me just set this one right that's why we slab our books ladies and gentlemen <laughs> wow <laughs> just had a heart attack <laughs> 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 but i just oh. saw that uh elite comics is actually accepting crypto now though too that mm -hmm. blew my mind i was, I was like wow 
Yeah. That's going to change the whole game. It's going to change everything. And that's, yeah. and, that, and that's something we've been talking about for a long time. Like, just wait till the, like, you actually can buy physical comic books with cryptocurrency. Like, hmm. that's going to be a game changer. And I've, I've talked to multiple people already who are like, I'm pumped because I'm, I'm crypto rich. That's it. You should see my bank account. It's not, it's not great. <laughs> and then and they were on the same boat. <laughs> and then you see my MetaMask and my, my vault value account, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're very we're very excited about this collaboration because you know they're they're understanding this space more and more every day. And yeah, I mean those guys are, are incredibly professional, just wonderful people, and I'm very excited to to bridge those these worlds together. And I know it's gonna be an amazing start. So big, right. again, big shout out to Elite Comics Eleven. And I'm very excited about the future of what we're going to do together. So, yeah, yeah. shout out to you guys. That's an awesome sponsorship right there. Awesome partnership. And I think Thanks. they Thanks saw. Me, I think they saw what was happening. I mean, people like me, they probably checked out. Like, oh, he's got the he he got this comic book because he's on VV app getting the Tom McFarlane Batman. Like, they're smart. They're starting to see the shift of what's happening. And so, yeah. I think I even saw uh, they released the. They said they had a comic for sale. Something that was just dropping on VV. It was like Killer Croc or something like that. I was like, wow, they're they're getting too smart. <laughs> we're, 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 we're trying to we're trying to put them in the right direction. No, so, no, yeah. you, you should you should be seeing more comics being released on Elite that all coincide with things going on on BB. And that's where uh, I think yeah, the shift is yeah. going to happen. I think we're going to start to see more stores even start to do that. That's where the whole synchronization of the digital and the physical world gets put together. We're going to start to see more and more and it's, to do that. And, and it's fun too because it's not just about the connecting the like those the physical and digital because now people are just going to be excited about collecting period and uh, people have gone out and I have, I have personal friends that have gone out and bought grails, you know, gra big grail wow. comics because they yeah. are just pumped about the space grails that haven't come to VV yet because they understand now they know the right. value of these, these digital comic books and the, and the physical comic books and how much it's growing over time. And, and it's, it's exciting, especially like understanding when people are really truly understanding the importance of grails or like big silver age keys or just yeah. big keys in general, the potential man. It's, it's, <laughs> this yeah. world is about to get a lot bigger. And it's like exciting. what I keep saying is like VV made collecting cool again. And like we all in the community yes. made VV cool. Like yeah. that's the thing. Like yeah. we used to be like, oh, like nerdy type thing. But VV made it cool and we all made VV cool. And now it's going to rejuvenate, revitalize, you know, spark that energy once again in the whole collecting. In all right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let me just set this one and right. That's why we slab our books, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> just had a heart attack. <laughs> but I just saw that uh, Elite Comics was actually accepting crypto now, though, too. That blew my mind. I was like, yeah, was wow, yeah, that's gonna that huge shift deal. the whole game. It's gonna change everything. And that's yeah, and that, that's something we've been talking about for a long time. Like, just wait till the like, you actually can buy physical comic books with cryptocurrency. Like, Jeez. that's gonna be a game changer. And I've, I've talked to multiple people already. Who are like, I'm pumped because I'm I'm crypto rich. That's right. it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's and go. I think, oh, yeah, let's you, go. you should see my bank account. It's not, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. not great. <laughs> and then and they were all in the same boat. <laughs> and then you see my MetaMask and my, my vault value account, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're very we're very excited about this collaboration because you know they're they're understanding this space more and more every day. And yeah, I mean those guys are, are incredibly professional, just wonderful people, and I'm very excited to to bridge those these worlds together. And I know it's going to be an amazing start. So big, right. again, big shout out to Elite Comics 11. And I'm very excited about the future of what we're going to do together. So yeah, yeah. shout out to you guys. That's an awesome sponsorship right there. Awesome partnership. And I think, they saw, I think they saw what was happening. I mean, people like me, they probably checked out like, oh, he's got the, he, he got this comic book because he's on VV app getting the Tom McFarlane Batman. Like they're smart. They're starting to see the shift of what's happening. And so yeah. I think I even saw a, they released the, they said they had a comic for sale, something that was just dropping on VV. It was like Killer Croc or something like that. I was like, wow, they're, they're getting too smart. We're, <laughs> we're, 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 trying to, we're trying to put them in the right direction. No, so no, it's, yeah. you, you should, it's you should be seeing more comics being released on Elite that all coincide with things going on on VV. And that's where uh, I think yeah, the shift is yeah. going to happen. I think we're going to start to see more stores even start to do that. That's where the whole synchronization of the digital and the physical world gets put together we're going to start to see more and more and it's to do that. And, and it's fun too because it's not just about the connecting the like those the physical and digital because now people are just going to be excited about collecting period and uh, people have gone out and i have, I have personal friends that have gone out and bought grails you know big grail wow. comics because they yeah. are just pumped about the space grails that haven't come to vv yet 
because they understand now. They know the right. value of these, these digital comic books and the, and the physical comic books and how much it's growing over time. And, and it's, it's exciting, especially like understanding when people are really truly understanding the importance of grails or like big silver age keys or just yeah. big keys in general. The potential, man. It's, it's, it's <laughs> this, yeah. this world is about to get a lot bigger. It is like exciting. what I keep saying is like VV made collecting cool again. And like we all in the community yes. made VV cool. Like yeah. that's the thing. Like yeah. we used to be like, oh, like nerdy type thing. But VV made it cool and we all made VV cool. And now it's going to rejuvenate, revitalize you know, spark that energy once again in the whole collecting industry, whether it's mm-hmm. comic books, collectibles. I'm sure the Pokemon cards are going to have another huge, you know, <laughs> turn industry, whether it's mm-hmm. comic books, collectibles. I'm sure the Pokemon cards are going to have another huge, you know, <laughs> turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for our next question, this comes from Jonas. What are the top five comics yet to hit Vivi? What are the top five non-Marvel comics? Ooh. Interesting. Okay. So right. this would be a question for you guys to kind of answer and me kind was, of yeah. listening to get educated. Said, on jo- I, John I was going to see if I could out. rattle off off the top of my head and then have Sean fill in the rest. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously the one that everybody is super excited about uh, from Marvel is Amazing Fantasy 15, which is first appearance to Spider-Man. Um, yeah, everybody's super hype on that. Um, on the DC side, Action Comics 1, first appearance of Superman. Um uh let's see like journey into mystery uh, i forget the number but the first appearance of thor what what number is it sean 83 do you think that one will make the first journey into mystery more valuable or not more valuable than this one that drops but like increase that price when that drops do you think that something like that could happen Hmm. yeah i mean they're both they're both equally valuable for different reasons right so you had the first appearance of thor and the first appearance of loki and like for me that the first appearance of loki man I think that book is both is very undervalued in the both physical and digital format because yeah. especially for the physical comic book, because if you're looking at the physical comic book, it's an incredibly scarce book. There are less than 1500 total physical, uh, physical editions on the CGC census. Wow. And for the highest grade, I don't think there's even a nine point. There's probably one 9.6, but there's only 30 total editions from a 9.0 and up. There's 30. Wow. My friend was, has a 9.2. <laughs> And the problem is there's no sales. There's no sales because everyone's holding them. So we don't know the comic's true ceiling, right? So like- That's insane. Amazing Fantasy 15, for example, and we just had a 9.6 sale for $3.8 million. Was it 3.8, million, $3.85 million. So, okay, now we know it's a new record. Now we know the ceiling, right? So the ceiling keeps rising. That's the ceiling for the biggest comic book of all time. Actually, I take that back. Action Comics 1, there was a recent raw graded copy sale uh, for $4.5 million. So that raw, just happened. Not, that happened. That, yeah, raw, a raw yeah. yeah. So like, I mean, that's like, like, like the most professional people in the world coming in and giving it a an estimated grade. They said it could be a nine point four, and I think that wow. comic could probably wow. sell for yeah. That that comic, if you bought that with crypto, I would not be surprised if that that comic sold for over fifty million dollars. Yeah. I would not be surprised in the future. Just be, <laughs> just let people know. But um, Journey in the Mystery, yeah, Stan Lee, right? Stan Lee wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah they both are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's that's the biggest that's the that's the biggest problem um, is this you don't know the ceiling for that one right so that's what over time it's going to change and I think once we have a big high sale on that comic it's just going to open up a lot of doors so but yeah so actually we did a really cool uh, Kevin Loader big shout out to to our boy Kev he's feeling mm-hmm. a little under the weather today so he couldn't join us but uh, he made this amazing amazing do- uh, little spreadsheet document that focuses on. The comics that could potentially come to VV. These are some of the biggest grails on, on Marvel and some of the biggest grails on DC. And each of these comics in their highest grade, it's estimated that they'd sell for over a million dollars. And a lot of them have already done that. Like the first one we'll see is the Avengers, number one. And that's the first appearance of the Avengers. And the next one's Action Comics, number one. This is the Grail of Grails. This is the first appearance of Superman, Amazing Fantasy 15. First appearance of Spider-Man, Batman number one. So the first ed- solo edition or first edition of the Batman series, but it's also the first appearance of Joker and Catwoman. Ooh. Captain America number one. So te- technically Captain America comics number one. This comic came out in 1942 and is the first appearance of Captain America, Bucky Barnes, and Red Skull. And there's less than 200 copies in the CGC census. Wow. Less than 200 copies. Wow. Incredibly scarce book. 
and also he's punching Hitler in the face, and it's hilarious. So like, this is like the, <laughs> yeah, I just, it's a great I, cover. I also, it makes sense story. why they included the Bucky Barnes and the Red Skull with the Mar- uh, Marvel Mighties. Like that now it's making sense. Stuff there like you that. Go. There yes. you go. It, it's it was interesting, Johnny. I remember um, in an AMA or was a Twitter space that Alex mentioned. He gave him like a little clue during New York Comic Con. He says, I, "I just want to say the comic that is dropping on Thursday is timely." And when he said that, I'm like, "Oh, you," because like, because so this comic, Captain America Comics Number One, was under the umbrella Timely Comics. That's where Marvel Comics Number One is under. Okay. So eventually, Timely Comics became Marvel Comics. Wow. In 1961, with the first, uh, with the Fantastic Four Number One, that was the first comic under the umbrella of Marvel Comics. But before that, it was Timely Comics. Wow. which is Captain America. And I thought for sure, like, New York Comic Con, he's from, uh, Captain America's from New York. I he thought that they were going to drop that. <laughs> yeah, I thought was dropping yeah. I'm like, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> that's, to me, that's like, that's my biggest grail. That's the one I'm most excited about. Um, so, so, oh my God, dude. I, uh, it's, 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 I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, if they're going to have Homer, you know, choking his kid out on the, on the <laughs> statue, I don't think it's a big deal of punching Hitler in the face. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we, we, we question people who question Hitler punches. Right. <laughs> Facts. Facts. And then the next one we have is Detective Comics 27. This is the first appearance of Batman. Huge. The next, this came out in 1939. 19, yeah, 1939. Same year as, uh, as Action Comics number one. Then we have Incredible Hulk number one. This is the first appearance of the Incredible Hulk. Journey to Mystery 83. This is the first appearance of Thor. Tales of Suspense 39, the first appearance of Iron Man, looking all sleek and retro. And then we have X-Men number one. This is the first appearance of the X-Men, of Professor Xavier and Magneto. That one is also a massive, massive book. But these are just the grails. We also have incredibly big Silver Age keys, like Fantastic Four 52, which is the first appearance of Black Panther. We have Giant Size X-Men number one, which is the uh, introduction of the new X-Men, first appearance of Storm and Nightcrawler. We have Fantastic 448, which is the first appearance of, uh, of Galactus and Silver Surfer. I mean, there's so many more books to come, man. Oh, Hulk 181, the first appearance of Wolverine, which is now it's a big one. That's a Werewolf big one. Black Panther too. First... Yeah, yeah, but Fantastic 452. And then uh, one that I'm excited about that's coming out probably pretty soon is uh, Werewolf by Night 32, the first appearance of Moon Knight, which is a really cool cover. Very similar to Hulk 181, where you have two people just balloting it out. Okay, yeah, I like so, that one. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm pumped, man. There's a lot of opportunity coming to Vivi, and that's why I, I try to help people understand you've got to prepare for what's to come. Facts. Because if you like, if you know, there's almost only so much money that can be spread, right? right. <laughs> yeah. There's only so much money out there. I mean, unless Dubai princes get involved, you know, right, right, <laughs> like, thanks. get the sovereign wealth funds. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which could happen, which could happen. But at the same time, you know, you just got to prepare for the future, right? You got to prepare for, don't think about what's on here now. Think about what will inevitably come to this app. And, you know, just, just be prepared for more so on your side. Like, make sure you have enough gems because there, I think the one comic that will, will cause a gem squeeze is probably Amazing Fantasy 15. Due to the popularity of Spider Man, I still think a, a lot, a majority of these people um, in the community, I think they still think uh, Sp- Amazing Spider Man number one is its first appearance comic, but it's not. I think the same it's thing. I think a- I think majority of the people do think the same thing. Yeah, I thought that for the longest the, time. Yeah, yeah, and it's a, it's a big book, guys. Don't get me wrong; it's, it's the first it first edition of of the Amazing Spider Man, which is a big, significant right. series. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's it's in its highest grade it'll easily sell for over a million dollars. There's only one 9.8 in existence and that would sell for millions. So talk about also say, talk about also about some of the lower grades. Cause I saw some lower grades getting sold for mm-hmm. crazy amounts of money of amazing Spider-Man one too. Like, yeah, yeah there was recently a, a, like amazing fantasy, amazing fantasy 15, uh, elite comics, 11 big shout out to elite comics. Um, they just, they had posted a, a 1.8 grade for $30,000. That's the one I saw. And yeah. I, I was yeah that I I need to double check and see if it sold yet but yeah I mean there you go I mean even in its lowest grade there's still tremendous value in these right. grails mm-hmm. and it's lowest grade that's, that's what that, that's what when I saw that I was like wow that's insane like it started to really register for me like how scarce how rare how much in demand these really are because 
when I saw the 3.0 gets over or asking for 30 grand, I was like, okay, <laughs> this is like big time. Like, you know, this is no joke just because yeah. the, the importance of what these really are. I mean, these are licensed by the real thing. These aren't just some made up yeah. comic book. Like these are yeah. the real deal. It's just digital. <laughs> like that's the thing that people can't get their grasp of. They're like, yeah, but it's just a digital. Okay. It's the same exact thing. It's just a different yeah. platform. Still Marvel. Yeah, I mean, and Marvel and my I, Marvel. I, I pretty confident Marvel considers these or, or trying to promote these as equals. Yeah. You know? So mm-hmm. it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And I, I think there's going to be a point in time where these could be considered equals by the public too. And I would think so. I think it's it's, it's really going to come down with sales. I mean, the people are already paying insane premiums for a lot of these comics. Um, I mean, look at Marvel Comics number one. There's only 64 copies in the CGC census. It's virtually virtually impossible to get. It's impossible, but there, it, there's opportunity on Vivi. You know, you're able to own its digital counterpart, which is officially licensed through Marvel. That's a huge deal. So between the secret rares and these physical copies, there's only 664 in existence. I mean, that by <laughs> itself is a, is a crazy scarce drop on Vivi. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We're talking the physical and digital, and that's it. That's it, guys. So, and I think the digital, it just opens up everybody who has an iPhone is now a collector. Exactly. As opposed to, yeah. as in the physical world, like, it requires work. You know, you have to research, where do I buy this? You know, is it graded? Is it not graded? Where do you go to send it to get graded? And, and it becomes a hassle. For where me, do you store it? <laughs> where do you store it? What happens when it drops, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But, so you know, the that's... digital collecting is huge. Being able to purchase, buy, sell, and trade these comic books instantly, instantly around the world. That is what, like, that's what blows my mind because I still, I mean, physical comic books are amazing. Right, right. It, it gets a little difficult when you have to ship it. You have to pay for insurance. It, there's just a few extra steps, which is 100% worth it, by the way. But being able to <laughs> step, buy, sell, and trade these NFT comics instantly, it's just going to create a lot more volume. and yeah i'm because that's what happened to me i got stuck i wanted to sell my pokemon cards when i found out they were worth a few thousand but i was like oh no this is going to take six to twelve months to get back there it goes like what i I was stuck psa that's exactly the same night i found vivi i found a comey i think was al khan one of those 2018 videos talking about how the blockchain and on vivi you're just going to be able to do it instantly and i was like oh this is what i need if I just had these Pokemon cards digitally, I could sell it instantly. I wouldn't have to wait six to 10 months, 12 months to get it verified, authenticated. And that's when I had the aha moment this yeah. late February into March. Cause I didn't understand NFTs found NBA top shot late summer into the fall. I could have been one of the first people in NBA top shot. I could have made boatloads of money. Um, oh dude. I, I was, I was involved in the, in the beta and I, you? yeah, I, I got the, uh, like the series one LeBron card that I pulled from one of the packs but like wow. I, I spent so little, like I, I got really lucky on that one. I was like, all right, I'll stop here. I like, I really should have just like gone super, super hard. And I just, I don't know. I, I didn't make the connection. I didn't, I didn't go that hard on it. It was early back then. I didn't, yeah. you got further than me. I was like almost laughing at these NFTs like the mainstream does right now. That's another reason why I'm like, all right, guys, I was part of the mainstream who was laughing at NFTs, not understanding how a LeBron dunk could be worth thousands. Like I was one of those people up until January, February. So the people laughing at it now, I'm like, no, no, no. I was one of you guys. Sit here and let me explain to you what I have learned. And then it's like, yeah. once people sit down and learn that, it's just it's the same thing. There's a way to authenticate the digital ownership through the blockchain. It's like, it start, you start having that aha moment little by little. And yeah. it was just perfect time for me to find Vivi just in time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's actually, it, I think we'll start seeing it uh, be a little bit easier to transact uh, physical collectibles pretty soon. Um, so there's actually a company that, you know, a friend of the podcast um, started. It's a startup called Viridian Exchange. And we actually, we did an interview with them. Yeah. Big shout out to Viridian Exchange. Um, and basically what they're doing is they create an exchange for um, basically trading uh, physical backed digital collectibles. So NFTs. So what you would do is like, if you had a, a, po- a graded Pokemon card or a baseball card or something like that, you would send it into them. They would, you know, verify it, make sure it is what you say it is. They would take a high res photo of it, um, and then they would store the the card or the collectible for you in their like temperature controlled, uh, you know, storage facility. And then they would then list that physical collectible as an NFT on their website. 
um, mm -hmm. on their exchange. And then you can then transact, you know, basically that physical collectible as an NFT and that, you know, that, you know, whatever it is, let's say it's a, I don't know, a, a Charizard first edition, whatever, it could change hands a hundred times on the platform, but the physical collectible never actually moves. It stays in one place, but the, 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 you know, the ownership still transfers. And at any time, if you want to, you can then withdraw that, that item from the, uh, from the, the application, from the, from the marketplace, and then they'll just ship it to you. Um, but, you know, it That's provides way more liquidity and, you know, ease of trade. And, you know, it's, this way you can still invest in those physical collectibles, then you don't have to deal with the storage. That's the future right there. That's how I see everything moving towards right there. Yeah. And they're, they're doing really cool incredible. stuff. Like they're, they're planning on making these like, uh, these, uh, like kind of like trade shows. Um, like they have like kind of like card shows, like where people go in person and they do, they make deals and they, maybe they'll trade like, you know, three cards and cash for like, you know, another two cards. We, they have all these complex deals and stuff that people put together. Um, right. They're trying to simulate the environment and do it in VR. Um, so they kind of have like a wow. VR like card show where people can go and, and do trades. And, you know, they basically built their smart contracts in a way that you can have these really complex transactions where you have multiple different asset types that get, get traded around. So you could trade, you know, cryptocurrency and US dollars and a couple NFTs for, a, you know, a, a few different NFTs or a different cryptocurrency or, you know, you can get really right. complicated with it. Um, but yeah, so, so something cool to, to look out for, uh, you know, they're, they're raising right now. Um, yeah, I think so. that's probably going to be a pioneer in this yeah. space. I feel like a lot of people are going to start copying the way they do things because I definitely see that being the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So this next question comes from Johnny. Great name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Steamboat Willie had an FE tag, would it be regarded as a top three collectible alongside Secret Spider-Man and Wall Statue? Cheers, Legends. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I think it, I think it's close. I think it's already yeah. at a high tier. I think bring that first first editions tag to it. It would definitely help it for sure. It would definitely help the value of it. I don't really know if it's gonna need that sticker. I think it's already an iconic yeah. by itself. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. What do you What do you guys agree? No, yeah. Kind of no I, I think yeah, it doesn't necessarily need it, but I also I don't know if I necessarily consider it top three either. I mean. I think there's there's more than enough other IP that could fit into that. Like, you know, I think Todd Todd should probably be part of that top three. Right. Todd Rizzo, Secret Rare Spider-Man, Partner yeah. Stacks, yeah. Team, Secret Rare that, Marvel that's... Comics number one. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say top three, but it's a it's a top, it's a top. It's, a, it's probably top ten, you know. Yeah. Top ten for sure. Yeah. I would put that yeah. top ten, yeah. Yeah. For now. <laughs> yeah, for now. See, that's the thing. Maybe you could just <laughs> imagine if yeah. all right, a couple of weeks go by and they release. You know, a secret rare animated FA Darth Vader 1000 editions. Like if, okay, yeah. see you later. <laughs> that, that thing is going. Are they, yeah. are they airdrop a, a golden moments, you know, of like winning the poo and oh it's my like, you know, like only like 1200 of them, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it could change so fast. Things could change so fast. <clears throat> yeah. This next question comes from Dog Life 367 How valuable are low sub 70 mints of Disney collectibles? Being the first Disney, like first Simpsons, first Star Wars NFTs, it is very hard to know how to value how to value them as most MP prices are in outer space. <laughs> outer space. <laughs> Definitely. Um, for me, I would say the low mint collectibles, especially on those golden moments, are going to be huge, like iconic. Mm -hmm. Like if you have, you know, sub, he said, said sub 70, I was going to say sub 1000. If you have a sub 1000 golden moment or a full set sub 1000, that's going to be impressive. I actually don't. I don't have, I slacked on the mints. I don't have any kind of low crazy. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't go for low mints for the golden moments either. No, they're going to be so big to I just, where I, I just don't want one of each. Them. Yeah. Like yeah, you just need to get matter. in there. I yeah, think that'll yeah, yeah. be crucial yeah. just to get in there. It'll be like that extra bonus. You're, you're in a whole different level. If you can get sub 100, sub 70s for them, that's like yeah, God yeah. tier. You know, that's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my lowest mint is a three digit 600 something homer and bart that's my only nice. low mint and i'm glad it's the first one i'm happy about that um but like my Things partner like, statues like, like three thousand mint two thousand mint nothing i'm just happy to have one <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> but god tier level if you get a sub 70 sub 1000 yeah, incredible a hold hodl 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 yeah or listed yeah. for 9.9 <laughs> unless, unless, unless somebody makes you an offer you can't refuse and, yeah. and celebrate that shit. <laughs> yeah, facts. But make sure you buy back a floor of whatever one you sell. No, yeah, exactly. Make sure you still have one. Yeah. 
That's a good point. Mark J. Dunce asked, what do you think about original comics coming to VV and what artists or writers would you be most excited about? Original comics? So what, what do they mean by original comics? Like ones that are... Yeah, I, I think they're asking exactly what like a, a comics that are only going to come out on, on VV as a oh, okay, and not okay. physical. So like exclusive VV comics that are not anywhere else. I exactly. do see that. I do see that actually happen. And you know what's funny? I see mm -hmm. kind of like that going with artist collectibles. I see, I think these artist collectibles or artist collectible. I think these artists who have collectibles on VV right now, like the Frank Kozik, Ron English, Jermaine Rogers. I have a feeling they're going to try to tie in maybe their collectibles in like some kind of story, if that's a comic book form or like their own story or book. I think these yeah. artists will start to have their own story book. If it's their own story book or tied in with their collectibles, like Jermaine Rogers may come out with a comic book all about his Darrow and like how that's like how that family started, et cetera. Or maybe Frank Kozik talks about his Labbits and how that whole thing started in their little story. So I, I do see, I don't know if it's going to happen with like, Marvel makes their own VV exclusive comic book type thing. Maybe that happens. I'm not sure how that kind of world works. Maybe Todd McFarlane does his own comic books on VV only. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm thinking more like artist collectibles come up or artists who have their own collectibles come out with their own type of comic book story. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, I um, like I could see, I could definitely see like Marvel releasing like a VV exclusive comic that uh, not just like a VV exclusive cover, but actually like a full story that doesn't show up in physical comics. Um, I could definitely see them doing something like that. I don't necessarily see if I can, I, I don't know if I can see them picking up like an independent comic book artist, like, you know, kind of like Terra Virtua and like some like the kind of like more like independent, you know, comic book artists and, and writers on there. Like, I, I don't think they're going to do anything that doesn't have a big brand or, you know, has right. a big IP behind it. Like, so they're not just going to pick up some random guy to do it. But right. like if, if Todd McFarlane, you know, decides that he wants to write a new comic book with a new character and, a, you know, whole new whole new series and all that, and he wants to release it, like something like that, I could definitely see like, I could see that happening. Yeah, I could see something like that. I guess you can do it with artists who are already on VV as well. Like Donnie Cates is considered one of the best Marvel uh, writers right now. And he's also an incredible artist. So like, you know, ho sure. ho hopefully that'll help him understand. <laughs> maybe <have> right. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Also, I mean, but for indie artists, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. It'll be it'll be tough to. I mean, obviously they need to partner with the uh, with the artist or the company that they're working with. But one of my favorite writers right now is James Tynan, and uh, actually Johnny, that, that's the book up there on your right shoulder. Top left. Uh, yeah, House of Slaughter, right there. There Let's it is. Oh. He he uh, he created a series called Something Is Killing the Children, which is one of my favorites. It's an incredible book. It, think, think of it like a dark straight like rated R Stranger Things, and okay. they're actually making a show coming to netflix wow so, yeah i'm very excited about that the guy is just absolutely on a tear he has another show called department of truth which is really incredible and apparently that show is going to be coming to hbo and he just had another series called oh, show the, house, show that house of slaughter books let's go house, house of slaughter variants yeah nice huge fan huge fan that's a cool that's one, awesome dude. yeah <laughs> Big fan oh. of comics, though, man. I never thought I'd nice, ever. Nice been. house in the lake as well. Is another another James Tynion comic. This is the uh, the second printing of that one. Second printing of the first issue. Okay. It's incredible. That guy's just on a tear. Absolute tear. Yeah. <laughs> so this this question actually came in from Joe, and he said, "What are the basic steps to handling and protecting your physical comics once they're delivered to you? The basic do's and don'ts of protecting your physical investment." So as Spencer just showed in his comic, you have basically a, 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 a that. It's called, this is called a bag and board. And usually a little, the comic a little books white order, piece of cardboard behind it. Mm, in a plastic case. Usually these, these comics, yeah, these comics come in like that. They should, at least from the seller. Mm. Typically, if you buy it from eBay, just make sure they have really good reviews and you mm. shouldn't have a problem. Um, and if you, go to, if you go to a physical comic book store, then you you, know, you spend like an extra like dollar fifty or something like that, and they'll they'll bag and board a you know a new book for exa you. Exactly, and you can take it even a step further by adding what's this is called a top holder, and basically it's mm -hmm. like a plastic. See right there, it's like a, a cover. A, yeah, it's yeah, like a, a harder case. plastic case for it. A harder mm -hmm. plastic case, yeah. So like baseball baseball cards or or Pokemon cards right. have that as well. 
So the same thing with the comic books. This is actually one of my favorite covers is Hulk 340. And it's Great. covered done by Todd, by Todd McFarlane. And it actually is signed by him right here. Wow. But it's actually really cool if you see the reflection of, of Wolverine's claws. This cool. is uh, it's the, it's the Hulk. Yeah, there you go. See what? That? Yeah. It's wow. It's one of the most badass covers. I, it's one of my favorites by far. I really hope we see this on VV. What's the issue on that one? I'm, what issue is it? Hulk three, Hulk three forty. Okay. Yeah, this is one of my favorites by far. That is an awesome cover right there. Yeah, big fan Super of Wolverine stuff. too. I can't wait till that collectible drops. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy. Exactly. And so this is a continuation of Hulk one eighty one, which is uh, basically Hulk versus Wolverine. Okay. And it's them on the cover fighting. So yeah. I'm gonna show you guys something that once you see, you won't be able to stop looking at it. So maybe it's a bad thing. <laughs> but if you look at Wolverine, if you look at Wolverine. It's two batman's face side to side to each other to make <laughs> one face that's like wolverine's face if you look at it it's like two batman no side to side I, I once i saw that i was like every time i see wolverine i think of that now it's unbelievable definitely an inspiration <laughs> definitely an inspiration <laughs> this question next question comes in from the t-shirt kid there's a lot going on with the migration and new people are coming this is changing the momentum of the app when do you when do you know when it's a good time to buy, sell, or hold? Yeah, this is actually a great question. There's a lot of new people coming to the app all the time. Like if you were just coming to the app a few days ago, you saw prices at all time highs. Maybe you FOMO'd in and you just bought everything right away. I think it's so important to, as a new user to come in. And I would say kind of just feel things out right away. You know, look at the market, see what prices are, see what they're going for a couple of days later. Just get a feel for how the app works. Really get in tune with the community too. Start following the influencers on YouTube, like Cryptos and Comics is one of them. See where their head's at on a lot of these spaces. The Gale's another great one. Gale just put out a video the other day about how, you know, it may be time to take some profits as things are just all-time highs. It was a great video because when new users come in and they see that, they just see what the prices are right now. Listening to these videos, they may get an understanding. Oh, okay, these prices were never this high before. So maybe I'm coming in when things are at an all-time high. Maybe I just watch a little bit and then let let things cool down and see where things kind of settle at. And if you did that, I think you'd be in a better position right now as things kind of settle a little bit more. And so that, that's one thing I would say. Coming in as a new user, you don't have the experience. You don't know what the marketplace was just a couple months ago. So that's when you have to rely on the research and the, the influencers are out there. See what they're uh, talking cherry about. Cherry charts to get the Cherry charts data. is another great one. Look at those charts where they were a few days ago, a month ago, to where they're at now. You know, there's people who do a great job with the charts. Buck Thompson's another YouTuber with the charts out there, gives marketplace updates. Um, there's a bunch of people out there. And so just tap into the community, I would say, as a new user, for sure. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I've been I've been very careful about buying in the past couple of weeks, just because there's been so much market euphoria. I am. Um, yeah. Really, I, I, haven't, I have, the only things that I've been buying are like super limited. They were like really low mint, things um because i actually i've been buying it for prices because i just you know floor prices are really unpredictable but like if i'm buying a super low mint common uh, you know like for example i bought a i bought an asm number one common um number 212 last week because um, oh, yeah. i wanted to get the the ultra ultra low mint you know that's uh, considered a 10.0 grade based on our grading system so i wanted to make sure right. i got that but like that's something that's a long-term hold like you're going to pay a premium for that anyway so like i, I don't feel bad about buying that during a, a really hot market but like I was definitely very careful about, about buying anything on floors. Yeah, big time. When things are at yeah, all time yeah. high like that, it's tough, you know? I mean, yeah, we have the experience, so we kind of know where like things weren't just this high. So maybe, you know, don't run your bags out right now and just buy yeah. everything. Exactly, yeah. And I think most importantly, you just, it, just to, to summarize what we all just, and all amazing points, but just do your research. If you yeah. don't know what you're investing in, then that's a problem. If you have more questions than answers, that's a problem. You've got to do your research and also have a game plan. Understand what you're investing into, but, but am, I, am I investing in this thing short term? Am I investing in it long term? Have a strategy and always have an exit strategy. And also, most importantly, don't ever, ever feel bad about, about selling your collectible in the green. I know there's a lot of people ah. going online right now, guilt tripping people about selling in the green. Right. that's bullshit anytime you can make a profit on something you did great Absolutely. so don't don't ever let anyone guilt trip you 
and selling something in the grave. Big facts right there. Um, He's a profit's a profit. You can always put those profits into something else. Exactly. Like that exactly. So exactly. Exactly. 100 percent There's so much opportunity coming to this app. Being in the green is a bl- is, is a blessing. Yeah. So just <laughs> like <laughs> big facts. Don't feel bad about that. Um this next question comes from Vindo 817. Last mint or sub 100 last mint or sub 100. Which one is more valuable? That's a really fun question. For me, I'd still rather have I think the first 100 personally. But I think if you yeah. can if you think like if it was a debate 40 to 50 to 60, I think I'd still rather have the first, but 60 to 90 to 100, 70 to 100, I think you can make the argument, therefore, then maybe best to have the very, very last mint possible. You won't get the MCP yeah. points, but I mean, value-wise, it could be, it could turn <laughs> yeah. out. That's a yeah. really good point. That's a really, that's a really good point, Johnny. That's kind of how yeah. I see it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of You can't go wrong with so. some 100s, though. <laughs> like, that's so true, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of the low mint, so I, I would probably pick the low mint, but I think a lot of it also depends on, depends on the collectible and depends on the edition size of the collectible. Because if it's something that has a crazy, crazy high edition size, um, like something like 100,000, like I would think that that number 100,000 would be a lot more significant for that, that last number than something that only has 1,000. 1,000, you know? right. Um, so I think a lot of it really depends on the edition size. That's a great point, yeah. yeah. That also ties into our belief of, the load mint numbers as well, Spencer. I know we, yeah. we've talked about that quite often about how, you know, if you have a, a number 250 mint number out of 10,000 editions or 250 mint number out of 30,000 or 250 out of 70,000, the 250 will be, or just purely looking at mint number, the 250 out of 70,000 yeah. will be the most valuable because that's the top Absolutely. half percent of the entire collection. That's really significant, right? right? Compared to like out of 30,000, that would just be the top 1% of the collection. So that's why for yeah. our, our rankings or our, our CGC uh, grading scale compared to mint numbers, and we talk about that often, but to, to achieve a 10.0 grade, you have to be in the top half percent of the entire collection, which right now only about 350 comics on all of Vivi can do that. Because so you, you look at, you yeah. Look, yeah, you look at Amazing Spider-Man number one and Amazing Spider-Man uh, 14 because of the yeah. high edition count. And that's why I think over time, we're probably gonna see, I mean, obviously because of the amount of users, more but more. also more and more people are coming in. Yeah. But I think high, high edition, total high edition numbers, that doesn't mean that these collectibles aren't going to be as valuable or as scarce right. because the scarcity is going to lie in the low mints. Yeah. That's where the scarcity is going to lie. Because especially like, for example, Amazing Fantasy 15, I would not be surprised if that comic is 80,000 plus total editions. I believe it's it. a smart move. It's a smart yeah. move. It's the most popular they'll comic in the world right now. With the most popular character. Instantly. They'll, all of them. They'll, <laughs> Instantly. Get, they'll constantly get recurring sales like crazy. Mm-hmm. And also the value in the low mints will be insane. So yeah. yeah, I think there's an incredible opportunity with even with higher higher mint collectibles. And also if they if they actually ever plan to burn collectibles in the future, that'll that's be huge, huge too. Down. So that'll make it even yeah, scarcer. More scarce. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is probably gonna happen. I think it'll happen more than not. The incentive will have to be huge. Um, but, but we got whales who got a thousand, you know, comics or a thousand. Yeah. Cl- it's gonna be nothing, People nothing, have a thousand nothing, common yeah. Spider-Man. So I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember like when it first dropped. I remember there's a guy who talked about he had 35 sets of the first Spider-Man collectibles. He had 35 <laughs> sets. Yeah, wow. I hope you still hold on to him. I hope that guy still yeah. hold on to him. Yeah. <laughs> it was wild. It was wild. He probably made his money back selling like three of those sets. Right. <laughs> oh, easily. I mean, yeah. I mean, no. Technically, he probably could have made all back at that time selling one now selling one do you believe that <laughs> he had a, because that, the price is around 1500 uh. for oh, oh but 35 for all of them but, but i mean i got i got spider-man commons the statue commons for 27 gems i got three or four of them like for that price that's when i stacked i stacked I, 10 I, of them i couldn't believe, you saw that too johnny right you saw that no I, I i got rid of most of them kind of early but i had to when walt happened like that was a lot of my I depleted my duplicates of those common spideys, a couple FA Jokers, and I had 30 yeah. FA Captain America Marvel Mighties too. So I had to like <laughs> oh. I had to let go of like 20 of those. I was like, You'd oh be great, my brother. Gosh. You'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's a really I love this debate. It's super cool. Um because mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with, with sub 100s. If you ever go my my VV profile, you'll see I've that seen I, it, man. You I, I, you got a couple <laughs> mighties in there too. I was like, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. They're gonna pay a premium. They're gonna be a premium. The sub one hundreds. 
Think of how hard it is to get sub 100s nowadays, especially because it's just randomized. It's not the first ones in there. So you literally just have, it's just luck. It's just whoever gets it on the drop gets the low edition. I, I, I still remember like right in the, the first Mighty's drop, like Sean and I were sitting there, we, were, we bought so many of these things. Like, <laughs> and, like, and it was like the next day we we're like, we just made the worst decision ever, didn't we? Like, why did we just spend so much money on these stupid little statues? We, 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 we went all in on our belief of FAs. Right. That's yeah. what FAs and, and, and low Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean like, off the market. I, dude, I have three, I have three, uh, some, I have two sub 100s of Captain America and I have one sub 50 of Captain America. Oh. And I went, hard, I went hard on those. And then I have like 25 or 30. Other little wow. yeah, I just went hot. Yeah. I went hard on cap, and it was just Martin, really based on. on my belief of FAs. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's exciting. But you know, ironically, I'm I'm going to go with the dark horse here, guys, and say that I think that I, at the last mint, again, pending total edition number, total editions, I think the last mint is going to be sold for a, 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 quite the premium in the future. You know, it's interesting. What, so. what really brought, brought brought my change to this, my feelings to this was. Um, the live stream with David Yu with NFT Pirates and, and Gail. And that, by the way, amazing, amazing live stream. Big shout yeah. out to NFT Pirates and everybody involved in that. And that live stream is awesome. You can check out his channel. We'll click the link below. But you got to check. Johnny, were you on that too? Johnny, you on I that was. Too? I was on that live stream. Oh, yeah. Johnny. Yeah, you were on that. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, call, tell us about. So he talked about the last men on there. Yeah, and he also talked about not only just, I think the last mint's going to be huge. He also talked about special mint numbers. Like mm-hmm. the special yeah. mint numbers that, it's not just low mint. It's the special mint. You get the year that Walt Disney was born. I think someone just talked about that on Twitter recently, right? It was 1928. I don't know the year, but whatever the year Walt Disney was born, get that yeah, mint yeah. number as a partner statue. That's going to be big time too. And as a collector, that's what David said he would like. David also talked about how he would like to own the last mint collectible. So that's mm-hmm. going to be huge yeah. owning. Cause the thing about it, you have the last possible chance to own the Todd McFarlane Batman, whoever owns a 7,500, huge like the same thing yeah. the four four thousand four hundred forty four. the reason why a lot of the coca-cola the coca-cola secret rare i think was only mint number i forget the year say 1950 because it was the first year that coca-cola you know was came established obviously it's not 1950 that year but whatever that year was was the amount of mint numbers because he wanted to make it significant anyone who owns that last mint may get that first the year that coca-cola was founded or Something like that. That was so, that Givenchy Pride. Boom. Pride. Yeah. A perfect example. Yeah. Perfect example. Pride. That was so, yeah, perfect example. Like, do you double down in, on the value there? That's wild. That's wild. But no, I was gonna say I'm interested to hear what you guys think about this. So, you know, for, for the low mint numbers, right? Like a lot of the low mint numbers are significant and are worth money, whereas only the last one is is worth a lot. Do you think that we're gonna see similar to low mint numbers where like the last you know maybe the, the the ten the last fifty the last ten or whatever are going to be significant. I think probably yeah. not. My my guess is that those are not going to be significant, not going to be valuable, and only the very very last one is. But curious to hear what your thoughts are on it. I was I was going to say probably I would think a little bit, but not like the last five hundred, the last one hundred. I'm thinking it'll be like the last fifty. And it'll probably be kind of tiered out, meaning like the last one, the one. Then the second to last one may be a little bit less of a premium. Third to last one, a little bit less. Maybe it may not go all the way to 50, like you're saying. Maybe it only is like the last 10. I'm pretty sure, though, in the, in the market last couple of months, the last 50-ish have been kind of increasing in price. That is something I've been I, looking I, I, so I've seen the trend. I just don't know if sales are actually happening there. So oh, Okay, so yeah, that could yeah, that's gonna be maybe people just delisting them. Yeah. For this to happen, or if it's going to last long term, too. We don't know if that trend is going to last long term. Right. Yeah, right. it's just going to come down to see where the sales happen and uh, yeah. see what yeah. people are actually paying 100%. for these things. Yeah. So, so last question of the day comes from Stacy. How much do you see the par- so price predictions, boys? How much do okay. you see the partner statue, MC One Secret Rare, and Todd Batman being in twelve months from today? Ooh, Johnny, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get some price predictions. So we'll have to run it back and do a, another interview today next year yeah let's see how close yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right let me start with the Todd McFarlane batman the very first nft i think this one's going to be an iconic <laughs> one of the most expensive probably <laughs> collectibles on vv at some point same with rizzo rizzo is going to be up there but we're talking todd 
a lot of things can happen. I think it's going to depend a lot on, you know, is this interoperable? Is this on OpenSea? I don't think it will be. I don't think the DC collectibles will be interoperable just yet. But I think we're going to get such an influx of users. I think we're going to see the top Batman that's going for, what, 13K right now in the marketplace, 12K, give or take, 12, 11K. In, in 12 months from now, I think the floor price will be over $100,000 easily. I think it'll be over $100,000 floor price for Todd McFarlane Batman easily. I think we'll should, be, should we, should we, should we all do one collectible we'll do, and then all of us, all of us give our production for that one. We can do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I think, well, no, I was saying like, we'll, we'll, we'll do one collectible and then we'll all do our prediction for that one and then we'll move on to the next one. Oh, okay. 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 So we'll each give our prediction for Todd right now. So I, I was going to say, I, I think probably minimum hundred K minimum hundred K floor, I think is, is what I'm, what I'm, uh, yeah, for Todd. I think that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I, I, I agree. I mean, even at 100K, that puts that around like a $750 million market cap. And yeah, I mean, it's, man, I mean, we've, we've taught, we had a video released in October. It showed the top six collectibles on Vivi, in our opinion. This is before the Disney announcement. And we, we talked about how all of these collectibles could hit like this su Superman, Givenchy Pride could hit over $100,000 one day. I didn't yeah. expect the Spider-Man yeah. Secret statue to hit that soon. We haven't hit a hundred thousand dollars yeah. sale, but we saw the floor. Yeah. But we saw the floor hit that in two months, two and a half months later. Wow. It blew my mind. But there, there have been confirmed seventy-two thousand dollars sales for that statue. Yeah. I just did not expect it to happen this soon. But I'm with you guys hundred yeah. percent over a hundred thousand dollars. I, I feel very I feel very confident. We know we don't, again not a hundred percent, but right, right. with you guys <laughs> in the sense of I see yeah. it, I see it potentially going down that, that road for sure. Mm -hmm. It's not right. inconceivable. I think Todd's um, going to be one of those collectibles to where people who have them will be able to one rent them out to people so they can not own, but have a rented, you yeah. know, Todd for the clout. You know, I own, mm -hmm. I have the first VV NFT. People will be showing that off, I think in the future, but not just yeah, the yeah, renting yeah. thing, but a down payment, like a collateral for houses in the future. Yeah. We just saw one brand, I think it was Milo or whatever that was to come out and start incorporating ability to use collateral, like use your NFTs as collateral four wow. houses and i do there's see a couple different happen. companies that have been that have been doing that yeah yeah okay yeah definitely more it's, couples mm -hmm. and especially ones backed by the big ip like like these ones like the ones we have right now like that's a huge yeah. deal i mean it's i mean there's no safer bet in the space than the ones backed by big ip exactly like government bond right yeah <laughs> like we got the government as a partnership with vv yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I always forget that we have usps right like yeah, I, I, I think i forget yeah. all the time it, flo it flies under the radar <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one right there that i think even me like i overlook it all the time because of everything that's on vivi we were blessed with mm -hmm. so many big ips we're I like know. there's just too much good yeah, stuff. usps <laughs> like what? I, I, I think that's actually one of the biggest reasons people i've heard people talk about how they're worried about mtl not coming to america and i'm like we're partnering with usps i think i don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal yeah. guys like <laughs> us government's on board sure don't it's gonna worry. Work out. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man all right so on to mc1 Oh, MC1 Seeker Rare. All right. This one can get crazy really fast. This one, can get, this one's already at like 100K floor. <laughs> this one, what is the floor right now? Like 70K it dip, it quote unquote dip to? 68. 68. Okay. So, okay. And 12 months from now, that's a million dollar floor. That's what I was going to say too. Holy shit, guys! Wow. I think I think I mean, yeah, for on that I, one. I, I mean, it's it, I I I felt that way, and I've talked to somebody personally um, that I know that got one on the drop for seven dollars, and I said, <laughs> "You've got to hold on to that." And I won't sell it for less than a million dollars. I mean, I having the chance, the opportunity to buy this with crypto, there's only six hundred and sixty-four copies between that and the physical in existence. That's, and also, this is the craziest part about that. Even at a million dollar floor, that's only a six hundred million dollar market cap, guys. <laughs> that's even at, at a Guys, at a million dollars, it's still a, a smaller market cap than than uh, Todd McFarlane Batman at a hundred thousand dollar floor. That's what blows my mind, and that's, that's why. That's rare. I, I think even high mint. mints will be. I think like the the high mint floor will be like one million. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna I, get I, wild, it's, not a, it's not inconceivable at all. It's it's truly mm -hmm. a grail, and it's the first of its kind ever. Yeah. So, um yeah i'm with you guys <laughs> it's right. wild wish, I, wish no, I had no, one no, no, no. yeah me too that that's coming from someone who doesn't have one 
I, I don't yeah. have one, so. 68,000. You get a burger right now. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I know, I know. I could. I, I, I will, I will could, say, though. But I don't want to do it. If, if, if the Walt statue does, I, I would do that. I, I actually I, I was blessed to, to grab a couple Walt statues. And if that, if the Walt statue does pick up and they ever go neck and neck, I would definitely. Uh, I, I, I would trade one for sure. Yeah. I would trade one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'd be a hard decision do. for me. <laughs> Although, why wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should do it. I don't know why wise I should do it, but the uh, if you only have one Johnny Walt statues. Oh man, I don't know. I love that. Do you have two, Johnny? I do have two. If I had three, I would trade one. If I had three, I would yeah, sell yeah. one for the MC1. Uh, because I only have two. I, say, yeah. I just want to hold the two golden Walts. Like know, that's like my stunt. I, I get that. Like coming to my showroom, I have the two Walt Disney's on like both sides of my showroom. And I'm like, that's something that I love. Like to me, that's like. When you go to a mansion, like you dream of a mansion and the front of their mansion, they got like two big statues of some, like to me, that's like my two golden dragon girls. Like I want to have yeah. my two wallets, my two golden dragon girls right there. Like that's my entrance. Like, so like, that's how I'm envisioning. If I had three wallets, I would probably sell one for that next best thing, but I can't get rid of my duplicate. So yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm holding out. I'm holding out on that. Yeah. One. All yeah. right. And here we go. The Walt statue. Wall statue. 250 like 250k in a year oh man are we oh sorry so what about you johnny one year from now yeah i'm gonna say 200k i'm gonna go a little bit lower i think it may take a little yeah. bit of time to go up there i was gonna say 300k but I'm, i re, i kind of down a little bit i think it's gonna shoot up it was already at 100k what am i talking about I'm <laughs> I forgot it already hit 100k. I was thinking it's wait, wait, no, wait, 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 no, this no, is, no, no, we're talking about partners. Okay, okay, yeah. Partners. I was thinking of Secret yeah. or Spider Man. I was thinking of Secret or Spider Man. Yeah, partners went to like what, like 30? 30k. Okay, 200k, 200k, 200k partner statue. I don't think yeah. it's going to reach above 200k in one year. Am I wrong? I hope I am wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I think 200k yeah. could be a floor for one year from now. Based off the IP, what it represents. I mean, we're looking at the biggest character, one of the biggest characters of all time. First appearance of not just the biggest character of all time with Mickey Mouse, but also the big, arguably the most famous entrepreneur in history, which is Walt Disney. And you have two FAs in one statue. And there's only 4,333 of them. So even if at, at a $250,000 floor, you're looking at just over a billion dollar market cap. Which is not inconceivable whatsoever with no, this not Crypto Punks and Void API, they are looking at about a three billion dollar market cap right now. Yeah. Three billion. Guys, it's not inconceivable. They see a two hundred fifty thousand dollar floor. <laughs> and just yeah. imagine if they actually add utility. Forget it. Statue. Million million that's dollars. What, this is without yeah. the, the utility, guys. Fly. Like this is without utility. We're not even thinking about that right now. Like, if that happens, exactly. I mean it's pretty much a lock that it's gonna hit these numbers. But that's speculative at this point. But I, I personal opinion on financial advice, I mean, it's, it's inevitable in my opinion, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. No, Man, great points. Wild. Great points. I mean, yeah. I, I see I also it, think. it's one of those collectibles where I don't see it going down in value over the years, right? It's one of those collectibles to where no matter what drops, the macro yeah. trend yeah, exactly. is exactly blue chip. Yeah. When more and more Disney drops happen, Mickey Mouse and Friends, well, guess what the king of all that is, right? It's the it's the Walt partner, yeah. Every yeah. Disney drop, Walt and Mickey goes up more and more and more. It's like it's like Todd Batman. Any other Batman that drops in the future, Todd stock is just going to go up and up and up, right? Mm -hmm. So Marvel yeah. Comics number one. The more comics we see each week, the stock of Marvel Comics number one is just going to go up and up and up. Spider Man. Yeah. When we see the Morales, the Miles Morales Spider Man. The black suit, the the blue suit. When we see all these different Spider-Man that drop in 3D collectible, I think the very first Marvel NFT will just keep going up and up and up. Now, yeah, it's going to be interesting because what if they do the Miles Morales 500 editions, right? Or something like we've seen with the Ben Riley one. It's going to be interesting. Maybe they might fight right away for it. But I think long, long term, it's always going to go back to where when people Google first Marvel NFT, Oh, the Spider Man. Yeah, the, the historical significance is always going to keep it on top. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So, are we, are we on the secret of Spider Man now for the guesses? 
right? We're on the secret of Spider Man for the guesses, predictions. Oh, we haven't, yeah, they didn't even ask that, but we totally, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah we can definitely let's do, do that one. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, I thought that was one of them. I thought that was one of them. Um, I, I'm, I like the secret of Spider Man a lot, man. I, I'm kind of biased because I do have one. I got it for $400. <laughs> like, just thinking about that is just, yeah. Mom, did you get one on the drop? Got her on the drop, guys. Oh man, <laughs> go you you go. Bell, man. If I was to guess on this price one year from now, it's at 73k floor or whatever, eight seventy eighty k floor. It might sound crazy right now, but I'm thinking like a five hundred thousand dollar floor. <laughs> that's that's Johnny, small. like, like I, I, that's I, what I'm I, thinking. Hey, Johnny, that's the number that came in my head too. I, I love how we're all. Let's super go. Cool. Oh, Spencer, I, I, Spencer, I, Spencer. I think it could be. I think it could be more than that. Honestly, yeah. I mean, if, I Marvel, if, we're, if we're saying Marvel Comics one could go to a million. Yeah, why wouldn't not be more than this? Marvel? Is you know, it's only four. It's only four hundred more editions. You know, right. So, right. see, my with, whole thing with is, it, I've been saying that okay, Super okay. Spider Man is going to be more than the Marvel Comics number one, but in that prediction, I just said it was actually going to be half less. So that's yeah. interesting. I'm I'm more so thinking. You are right. I probably should re. I probably should make this a little bit higher than a five hundred thousand dollar floor. I think that the five hundred thousand dollar floor is like six months from now, to be honest. Because, like I said, I think Marvel Comics number one, Secret Rare, is going to be like if this is a Secret Rare Spider Man, Marvel Comics number one is like right below it. I think just because this is Marvel's first NFT, and then this is Marvel's first comic book. So I think that like it's yeah. just right below it as like neck and neck. They might even fight each other. Marvel Comics number one may go ahead again because yeah. it was ahead of Secret of Spider Man for the longest time. So I think they're going to yeah, be neck yeah. and neck for the longest time. So one million yeah. four from each, I would probably say. Maybe give yeah, it yeah. to That's what I'm thinking. A little bit yeah. more. Wow. Because even then, that's only a billion dollar market cap. You know, right. that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, yeah. that's not, guys, that's, I mean, Man. that's not even, it's a, that's a third of CryptoPunks right now. Right. So with the biggest, <laughs> I, with arguably the biggest, most famous character, biggest IP in the world right now. So. Yeah. And you know, and I do think it's gonna too, flip. It's like, I, I think yeah. it is gonna flip. It's a, I got laughed at and I, I got called uh NFT hater, I got called all this stuff because I kept saying how like because I'm so about Vivi, because I think Vivi's the best, because I think Vivi is gonna be the mecca, it makes other people who have bags and other NFT projects, I feel like kind of think I'm like hating on them. But I say in all my videos, I want every NFT platform to succeed. I want everyone mm -hmm. to do well because. Yeah. If all these other projects do well, that many more people, average people, non-crypto people come in and they'll eventually yeah, find right. Vivi. They'll eventually yeah, find a brand specific. that they love on Vivi. But like, I just exactly. have a feeling, I don't think most of them will succeed, unfortunately. I want them to, I yeah. root them all to do well, but I just think like majority of them may not last long-term is all. So yeah, it's just, I mean, if, you, if you want to put, if you want to put your money somewhere that it's, it's going to go up, but is also going to be stable and safe you want to you want to be putting your money somewhere that's backed by really significant ip facts so yeah facts. yeah i mean this is just facts i mean it, it's i mean you heard gary v talk about that all the time it's he feels that there's gonna be like a 98 percent bubble you know of 90 yeah. percent of projects are just gonna a bust Absolutely. and i mean he's, he's very outspoken about it and honestly mm -hmm. i agree i mean there's just there's too many projects too much money being popping up every day and, and yeah and it's just not enough utility behind them you know no. Yeah. and yeah it's it's unfortunate and i really again hoping for every, everyone works out for everybody but yeah i mean there's no safer investment than investing in the biggest ip in the world right like, yeah, man. Exactly. I mean, and, and you look at you look at physical collectibles you know people use them as a store of value um you know in, in general you know physical collectibles like comic books or cards mm -hmm. you know they hold their value a lot better than you know more traditional assets like stocks you know in in terms of in times of market downturn so I, I think people are going to see, you know, these digital license collectibles very much the same way. And it's just Absolutely. a lot easier for them to move their money in and out of this than it is the physical collectibles. So I, I don't see why people won't take the same exact mindset. Um, and like Mark Cuban, you know, is, is super hype on collectibles mm -hmm. as well. Exactly. Like, exactly. You know, you, you listen to people like that. You know, they, they've, yeah. they know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. And that's why we we always emphasize like we we the digital for comics books for comic books specifically the physical and digital connection right mm -hmm. so these physical comic books are not just they're, they're they're not just surviving but they're thriving and they're crushing it so, I, so they're growing even more too they're growing and growing yeah. mm -hmm. we passionately believe it's going to be the same for these digitals as well over time yeah.
someone like me came into this space and I, I was not into this space. So seeing what it did for me firsthand, oh my gosh, I know the collectors are going to go crazy. I just going to take time. <laughs> <laughs> and especially as the technology advances too, you know, with the right. glasses coming out from Apple with AR and VR, like people are going to actually see it for themselves and get it. You yeah. know, Jeez. like so I remember when the, when the, uh, Visible Woman dropped and Marvel tweeted tweeted it out. There were a couple of people who said, "Oh yeah, this is a cool JPEG, cool, cool yeah. two hundred dollars, yeah. hundred dollars, fifty dollars JPEG." And then I said, and I, I sent my Spider-Man secret statue. I said, "How do you like this eighty thousand dollars JPEG?" And I used started yeah. in AR. Yeah. Like, how do you like that? How do you like yeah. him out there? <laughs> like they have no idea. They have no clue. Uh, yeah. The fact that you that you you Johnny and Spencer and everyone listening right now, you guys are so far ahead of the game. You know, you, a lot of people are. Some people are doing better than others. But at the end of the day, you're involved right now, and that's all that matters. And you're going yeah, to win yeah. because of it. Yeah, that's just what I want to say too. Before I get off of here, I just you may be coming to this VV app. You know, seeing the community, you may feel like you're behind. You've seen all these big collections. It's early. It is early. early. It's only going to take a few months for you to catch up, or anyone just joining. You know, hit a couple drops, make a couple good moves in the marketplace, and boom. You know, things yeah. could change dramatically. I right. just I just had a wonderful conversation with this uh, gentleman in England, and he flipped his way up all the way to a Walt statue. And wow! I'm, yeah, a big shout out to him. And wonderful guy. Life changing. I helped him. Yeah, I helped him acquire a Walt statue, and you know, he put, had to start with a small amount of money. Got a Rizzo. Rizzo went up. That had some, yeah, and that's, that's what's about a Walt statue. And I, I awesome. help them understand like there's no safer investment than that on probably on VB right now. Yeah. Purely based on the IP and what it represents and the potential utility that could come from the statue as well. This is so Walt it's very Disney. Exciting. Like it's Walt Disney. It's yeah. Walt Disney and and, and Mickey and Mouse. People don't understand and Mickey Mouse in one in one statue. Yeah. And what people <laughs> have to understand too is Disney is incredibly sensitive when it comes to Walt Disney. Like guys, to give you an idea how sensitive they are with their brand and their name, and also Walt Disney, there is a museum in Di in uh, San Francisco, and it's from the family of Walt Disney, and they wanted to call it the Walt Disney Museum. Disney came to them and said, "No, you're not. You're not using our name." Wow. <laughs> they told them that they can't use their grandfather's wow. name for their museum. That's literally, it's a beautiful museum, by the way. It's absolutely right. incredible, and it highlights the brand, and it it it, it basically markets their brand. It's they all about his name on him it. growing up. <laughs> and just, yeah. So they, they uh, came to an agreement. They came to an agreement of the Walt Disney Family Museum. Wow. That's what they agreed on. But that just, I'm trying to explain that people understand that the importance, the significance of this NFT. Huge. Guys, we, this may very well be the only NFT we ever see of Walt Disney. It's very possible. It probably is. To be, very, that's very a great, possible, that's, yeah. a, that's a great point you just hit on right now. I would almost bet my entire collection. Almost bet, <laughs> almost bet that we probably won't ever see another Walt Disney NFT. It's the most iconic there. image of Walt Disney, and it's also connected to the Disney parks, which is why we believe we strongly believe in utility that's coming to the statue. Yeah. But Matter of that's time. still TBD. Speculation. TBD. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When not if. <laughs> yeah. Johnny, you're so awesome, man. Like, it was just so much yeah, fun. Thanks so much for coming on. This I, has been so much fun. Long over no, I appreciate brother. you guys for having me on, man. I appreciate that big time. I love you guys. Love the content, man. Before all my drops, you know, if it's a comic book drop, I'm tuning in for the hodl or sell. I'm seeing what hey. the <laughs> geniuses, the goobers are doing. So, <laughs> there we go. Appreciate you guys for Just having me on big time. It was a lot of fun. So, thanks, Johnny. Before we go, go Niners. They're playing tonight. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be a good game. Turn up. Turn up. Yeah, I'm pumped. Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you again next week. Oh, before we go, fuck the moon. Let's go to Mars. Let's go. Comics and crypto. Crypto and comics. Call it.